I watched you and uh, talking to Haas and Nick Fuentes. I don't usually watch that much of uh, that sort of content, but um, I felt like it would be interesting to talk to you because it, it feels to me like you were talking to people who you probably have too much of a, uh, like, um, how do I put this? Like a brand relationship with, you know, like your communities are sort of like at war with each other. I don't really know? care that much about that. I mean, they are, but sure. I mean, I just think I think it plays more into like how much people are willing to like be uh, faithful auditors of each other, right? Like um, for uh, other people, it might be. I understand. Better... What you're saying, yeah, I have a hard time taking Haas seriously. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad it, thing yeah, or sure. anything, but yeah, I know. What you're, I know what you're coming. Uh, I mean, I'm friends with Haas. Haas is one of my friends. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, he, I, 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 I know uh, how he's like. Like he has a pretty uh, hot temper sometimes. Well, it's but, not um, his temper. I, mean... I consider him to be genuinely a stupid person. Like that's the issue, but. <laughs> But oh, I understand you probably is definitely not a stupid person. I mean, I've had a lot of conversations sure. with him. Haas is, Haas is very well read, like, in um, a lot of uh, the difficult literature, I would say, just, like, having read a lot of the same things myself. Okay. So I have a lot of respect for Haas. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've spent a long time talking to him. Uh, it's hard to, like, translate that sort of stuff to the sort of medium of Twitch, I think. Like, Twitch isn't really a great medium for, like, say talking about um you know the history of western philosophy or something like that like these like large uh sort of problems or large uh fields of inquiry right like that's like usually you know you want to have like a group of people who are like reading the same sorts of things more devoted to like having a deep discussion about stuff like that more like a college course right is like where you'd have like a better environment ideally for talking about such things I don't know if it's like if it if it's like evident to you just through like your interactions with him on Twitch or whatever, but um, I Haas is not a dumb person. Like I don't think you're a dumb person either. I don't even think Nick is a dumb person, but I think Nick is probably dumber just on like a basic level. Okay, I don't think Nick is dumb at all. Um, I disagree with him on things. Um, Haas, I well, I, I, would, I, I, yeah. well, but, I, but I, I mean, I, regardless, I, obviously, I know you're from Haas. We're not here to discuss Haas's intelligence. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you want to chat about? I'm just more interested in like what what do you think is like the situation right now? Like how do you view the world moment that we're in? Like do you think we're like in a good place right now or like do you see things like getting better from here or like getting worse or we could limit this to just like America specifically? Um I think in some ways we've gotten way 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 better, but in other ways I think we're kind of flying apart at the seams and we don't really understand why. What ways have the things gotten better? Um, I mean, in like, in very obvious senses, things like medical advances, things like the general state of peace and security around the world, um, things like the overall general health of people, especially in third world countries, I guess you can point to obesity and stuff. Um, did I, like, techno- okay. obvious technological saying stuff. saying like, like globally. Yeah. So you're just more talking about like the global, uh, state of like technology and like the advancement of these sorts of technological um, improvements and you know access to inf- like yeah, more advanced stuff infrastructure, like et cetera, et cetera. The stuff like more, many that's more mo- like most global level. Yeah, probably Th- things that like Western people would point to and go like, "Oh, look, this is, we're doing good because I can tell because of this thing, right?" Yeah. Well, I'm not. I, I'm not really interested in like Western. Like, I'm not. I don't really care about like Western people. I think that's kind of a bullshit category, frankly. But um, Why do you I say- mean, I was saying, okay. I was saying more specifically, like I'm in America, like America particularly. Do you say that things have gotten better here, let's say, in the last 40 years or worse? I mean, it's, with respect to what? It depends, right? In terms of, like, race relations For and, the, like, sexism and stuff? Yeah, I think we've gotten way better. In terms of uh, in like access to education? Pro- yeah, way like, better. Yeah. Like, you could say the quality of life or whatever, however you want to put it. Like, the, we, mm-hmm. I, I would say, like, maybe um, the amount of, uh, like, the, the quality of life of people, I think, is primarily the thing, right? Because actually 40 years ago, like, on average, people had more, like, disposable income, you know, and they... They owed a lot less. There's, uh, we had like a lot less debt, like consumer debt and like debt for like sure. medical quality debt, of life debt, gets like really difficult to like measure at that point though, right? Like 40 years ago, people might have had less debt and more disposable income, uh, but like not everybody had a cell phone or access to the internet, right? Because those weren't things that existed 40 yeah, years. Yeah, but ago. they also didn't know that they didn't have a cell phone. So how could that be like impacting their quality of life if it's like a good that they don't they c- can only imagine? Sure. You know, I mean, 300 years ago, like, people didn't know that there were cures for cancer. So how can they? Right. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just well, saying yeah, that no, it's, no, it's no, really no, difficult to quantify. A, I think that's like, a legitimate... yeah, it's difficult to quantify. No, I think, like, what no, is it? No, I think that's. No, 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 no. But I, I do think that like quality of life has a lot more to do with like comparison within like your immediate like phenomenological re- like reality. Like you know, like the immediate generations around you. Like 
the things you that's like how you're really you're, you like you compare your quality of life to like amongst your peers and amongst people that like you see or like you've known of you know what i mean you're not really comparing it in like this like absolute like larger sense because you can't really compare your quality of life right now to someone like 500 years ago because it's like a totally different world like well, the world works totally you, differently you absolutely can right but i mean like I, i'm just i'm saying that it's a challenging oh, no. thing how to would do. you do that well, by saying that 500 years ago, like fucking 30% of women died during childbirth or whatever, and that doesn't happen anymore. Like that's one way I could compare. But they expected that to happen. Yeah, okay, no, but that, well, I mean, that's if that's, true, if that's like, what we're gonna say, then in that, that case, world. in that case, every single st quality of life is just neutral because it's always compared to itself, right? Like, well, th so then what we would do is, right, is we would compare like the current American quality of life or like the trajectory of the American quality of life of the last 40 years to say other geopolitical uh, hegemonies over the last 40 years and their trajectories, we could compare that way, right? Because now we're just comparing like with like, like people in the same world historical moment. I mean, I don't know why you think proximity in time is more important than proximity in like geography or, or vice versa. Like, could, could I just point to the fact that these people live in different worlds, like people 100 years ago lived in different worlds? Like, that seems strange to do. Well, I think there's only one world, right? So like we all live in like this world right now. We're all alive at the same well, time but we don't all, and not, in the same space. Not really. Because we're all in the right? same planet. I'm connected to you right now. Yeah, I don't but know like are, are you, you more connected anyway. to an American 30 years ago or to somebody living in Sudan today? Right? I think that like well, I, I think that the time and actually, geography are both pretty I, I would say right? personally, personally, I, I have a lot more I found in common with like other with like a lot of foreigners who I've made friends with. Um, through the internet and various other things who are like sort of um, uh, see things on a global perspective more similarly to me. Oh God, this conversation is going to be super boring. Do about things. Like I find it very difficult personally Hold to on, wait, talk okay, wait. to Americans. Yeah, so even though wait, I'm ba American. bagging up. Who do, you, who do you share more in common with? Like in terms of just like quality of life, things that you do your day-to-day -day basis, like somebody living in a country like the United States today or 30 years ago, or somebody living in like a sub-Saharan impoverished African country, right? Like, I don't think the Which, fact that we all share- What do you mean by like a sub-Saharan, what do you, where do you mean specifically? Like, I don't know, I'm like, Africa is like pretty diverse in regards to- Sure, how, I use like, Sudan as a country before, like, right? Do you, do you think that you share more- okay, common, Sudan? Yeah, with somebody that was like in Sudan today, um, or in one of the like, what, like six ongoing genocided areas today, or somebody that like is from America like 30 years ago, right? I think the geography is pretty important. I don't think it's, I think but saying, say on a class level, on a class level, like the, like the, uh, like what I'm doing to like survive in the world, I probably have more in common with someone, uh, in a similar like class position as I would be or whatever, 30 years ago in a Western, as you would say, or American, uh, country like zone. Sure. But in other ways, the person in the Sudan also has more in common with like, we both have, probably have iPhones. Um, I don't know if that is true in. I don't know across the course of African countries. I don't know how many people have access to technology, but I'm, I'm just saying that like I don't think that it's um, I don't think that it's necessary. iPhones are pretty proliferated. Like it's been pretty. We've hit like pretty much like we've hit like pretty lo like like almost everyone in the world if they want to have like a smartphone like has one. There's been like okay, I'm almost 100 positive that's not true. I don't think that's the case. Really? I think there's a well, lot I'm of places in, in, in Africa and poor places that don't even have access to the internet. No, they, they don't have access to the internet, but they will all, but like, they'll have these things too. Like, be, like, because they're used by like larger, they're like handed out kind of by a lot of like American, like what, like, what do you think the USAID is doing over there? Like, you know, the whole, there's so many programs of like giving people this technology out there. It's a big part of like our like geopolitical strategy right now. You have like Elon Musk trying to like, you know, put up Starlink or whatever. Uh -huh. So we can tie like the entire African continent to like our internet, right? Because like we're so like these things are already proliferating like that's what i'm saying i'm saying i think you'd be surprised how much we'll have iphones all over the world you know or just like phones in general those are, those have proliferated really fast okay um where do you want to go with this or what's the oh i was still so basically like my my contention i think where we probably disagree the most right is that i see america on like a trajectory towards like like a very negative trajectory over like the last 40 years and i see that thing worse um and i don't think that things in america specifically are getting better or have been getting better for a while i think things have been getting continually worse with for respect a long time. to what the well-being like the, the quality of life like the way people imagine their futures to be like just
pretty much on almost any imaginable metric well, so um, like, of like the reason why i'm pushing life, here is because like think not, not on any right because like medically we've made improvements technologically improvements so like with respect to what in more particular things you think have been we actually have like like the the, the uh life expectancy has actually dropped right in america over this time period sure but dropped why for a myriad reasons, right? Well, like I think it's because of reasons. suicide and opiate, like, overdoses. It's not like our medical technology has gotten worse, right? Well, well, well partially because, like, people don't want to go to the doctor and things like this because, obviously, our healthcare system is, like, a complete racket and, like, totally atrocious, like a crime no, against I don't humanity. Think that's what, I don't think that's but, what people attribute the the lowering uh, life expectancy. It's because of the amount, I think it was because of suicides and I think it's because of opiate um, overdoses is why it fell for the first time. Well, suicide and opiate overdoses, right? That's an interesting thing. Like deaths of despair being like raising quite drastically over the same time period. That's interesting. Like, why do you think that is? Um, probably because people are lonely would be my guess. Lonely and purposeless. Like, why are they lonely? Either they are really bad at socializing, they don't have very many friends, we don't make good spaces in society today for people to find each other and socialize with each other, we become a little bit too atomized, especially with the yeah, internet. Yeah, why everyone. is that? So we um, made the probably, I think te right? I think technologically, I think, is a big reason why a lot of this is happening now. Yeah, so, like, we made the internet, and the internet kind of destroyed um, our, like, social fabric. Creating, like, a new social fabric, which is, like, the internet, right? Like, now the internet is the social fabric. Okay. So like why what where'd the internet come from why do we have the internet Obama. Um, i imagine you have some big philosophical reason why so why don't you just tell me <laughs> no it's not really philosophical it's more of like a historical question you know like who developed the internet like who funded it like Keep why was it together like you know? i mean i think the u.s military originally used it for messaging and then i think that two people at some universities figured out that they could like ping each other back and forth and then i think that it grew out of some like universities like research projects and people kind of messing around yeah. with it and then eventually there was like a uh, business application for it and then it slowly grew from there yeah yeah that pretty much that's a that's like a good short way of putting it i mean it kind of develops out of the same like sort of scientific like research um you could call this like war socialism or something under like fdr like going into world war ii like the this is like where the cia the oss like all of these things are being developed at the same time you have this like whole network of like imperial technocracy right like this new imperial technocracy that we put together during world war ii and uh, like that did the Manhattan Project and all these things. I mean, the Manhattan Project directly carries over into like the early days, at, like DARPA and things of building the Internet, because the Internet is designed ultimately to be like a continuity of governance manager for uh, like a post nuclear state. Like if we had this Internet, um, then, you know, it would be much more difficult to destroy our like means of communication and things in a nuclear exchange. So like that's why we built the Internet. OK. So like the, so like basically what i'm saying right is like for so in that same sort of way that like this was the thing that we created like more so i would say even than the the atomic bomb was uh our sort of advances in like propaganda uh propagandistic like technology media um media proliferate like media technology these sorts of things are what really won us uh world war ii and it's like the foundation of like our empire is like public relations and like advertising like you could call this psychological warfare. I mean, it's all really the same thing. Um, and like, so this is the thing that we built. We like perfected this as an art, but it's also like sort of now destroyed like our social fabric, like by doing this, um, by creating this America that we live in now, we destroyed the social fabric that like gave rise to it in the first place. Okay. But like that's why that's my explanation for why things are like getting continually worse in america it's because like we don't have a uh, social fabric through like decades of like psychological warfare and um manipulating of um you know like socialist movements and things like that like people fighting for uh like the quality of life the working class for like say a right to health care a right to all of these sorts of things these were like the the number one enemy to the like this like technocratic imperial governance that was put in during like during world war one and world war two through the cold war and uh these are the people who like truly run things in this country and they're running us into the ground like uh, uh, like they, they don't particularly Keep care your life, then. about Working us class, Andy. except as like abstract like human resources in their game theoretical uh like war plans and things like this right Obama. gotcha so what are we supposed to do what's the next step 
what do you what should what do you do in a situation like that? Like right, like you could say like, well, what what's elect candidates, right? Sure. Let's well, elect I'm candidates asking, what do you think? What them. do you think we should do? But I, what I think we should do, well, I don't really think there's like we don't have that much agency right now in this historical moment. Like I think that things are going to get a lot worse before there's even an opportunity to uh, like alter the structures that we're like enslaved by here, right? Like so, I'm like I'm like a long term optimist. I'm an optimist globally, but in regards to specifically America, I'm like a very very pessimistic about like the next say 50 years of American history. Okay. You think I'm wrong? Like, what do you? How do you feel about that? Like, would you agree? Like, would you? Or do you feel differently? Um. Yeah, I probably feel a little bit pessimistic, but for um, different reasons. But um. Like, what are you pessimistic about? Um. I. I mean, like things like misinformation are, I, I think, really pervasive. Um, I think that the way that we have kind of like taken to our new like ways of socializing w without like giving people the tools to like live that way. Um, so for instance, the way that our lives are so like heavily dependent on the internet and everything, but we don't know how to have like real friends anymore and stuff like that, or maintain like healthy relationships, stuff like that. I think these are the things that are really negative in today's society. Um, and then, I mean, there's- Sure, I probably disagree with you on misinformation because like, yeah, I'm course, like no. according to who? Yeah, according to who, you know? I'm like more ahead. of like a, like John Milton. Uh -huh. Poet. Okay. No, I, mean, I was just asking. Oh, no, Do you I like literature? Um, I guess not, according to Haas, so. Uh, I don't know. I saw you had in your, in DGG, you have like a, a book recommendations thing or like a little book club thing. I was looking at uh, the conversations there because I don't, I don't really know much about DGG, but some people were posting some pretty good things. I have uh, this, this someone, this guy uh, shouts out uh, Manhattan Silver has a picture. It's got a got like Fichte here we got Kant uh, Rawls though that's unfortunate Hegel that's some good stuff okay no um but what I was saying about like John Milton right Milton wrote this book called the uh Aeropagetica I would highly recommend it but it's his like defense of like the value of having like you know um I including misinformation allowed in like the public square because like he believed that like you know in like the triumph of um you know ideas like through like the the single combat of like dialectical engagement, like, you know, mm -hmm. people like should be allowed to publish pretty much anything they want. And um, then we like have a argument about it, you know, and like, you know, the people who are right end up triumphing. The things that are true end up being like eternally true and the things that are false end up like falling away. So I don't really think misinformation is like that much of a problem in that sense. Like I would say there's more misinformation from these like institutional powers than there is from like, I don't know, uh, random Twitter accounts. Okay. I mean, obviously, I would disagree basically with every part of that, but... Like, what, what, what would you disagree on? Like, for, like, what... Um, I, I think don't know. The I idea like that, like... Anything, that's too absurd. The, what was it? <laughs> the idea that, uh... I think the idea that, like, people can have, like, a battle of ideas and the best ones always win out, I think, um, betrays, like, a fundamental misunderstanding of human nature. Um, and the idea that, like, institutions so you think that, like, are producing had, like, more misinformation progress? than... Um, like scientific progress, like, isn't that how that works? Like in science and like every field, is that like we have this like open dialogue? People put out um, these pretty the like open dialogue proposals. doesn't happen in the scientific field among the public. It happens among technocrats, right? Or like, like the scientific. Well, not not necessarily. Yes, I mean, that's not almost true. certainly necessarily. Yeah, of course. No, there's been tons of scientific advances that don't come from like, I mean, if you're looking at like the age, like where the age of science, you know, the, the early days of science, this is all like uh, the technocrats, quote unquote, were just like whoever was contributing to uh, scientific research. I mean, you Who go are back going to, the to be like the most educated people, probably some of the generally more wealthy ones in society. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Almost to get certainly necessarily. Wait, hold on. If you're making like advancements in chemistry, you. if you're making advancements in chemistry, if you're like just having the capital necessary to buy the tools and equipment you need to do these tests, probably for the last hundred years are almost certainly going to be coming from people that are well educated, are upper educated, and have the financial means to even have the luxury to pursue that research. You're not ignoring the money required to do it, just oh, like well, the fact you wouldn't have for to. For a hundred years, sure. Yeah. The last hundred years, if you're talking specifically about like laboratory science, if we're talking about that. Sure. Um, but, you know, so I feel like science is much larger than that, right? Well, like, even historically, if you a... look at advances in like mathematics and stuff, like a lot of this stuff is going to like, like were Plato and Aristotle people out working the fields, if you look at philosophy, or if you look at 
people like Newton or people that have made major contributions. These people, like these are people that these are scholars that sit in rooms all day, like studying and reading and stuff. It's not like a, a worker in a field, you know, invented calculus or discovers something. Right? It's almost always going to be coming from like wealthy, like well-educated. I don't want to say elites, but kind of, yeah. Well, you're more like the priest class, right? Like, I don't know if you would call like, like, cause like a lot of these people also like, you know, they're like, uh, like a lot of this research is being done by priests, right? Who've taken, like, I, vows I would of, like, easily poverty. call the priest class part of the elites. Yeah, of course. 100%. They're, kind, they, they, are, they tend they to be aren't, very well educated. Like they tend to be the priesthood. They tend to be very well educated. They tend to have a lot of like financial means available to them. Um, they carried a lot of power in society. Yeah, of course. I would call the, the priest class like relatively had high social status. How, how would they not be part of like the elite class? Because there's different types of priests, right? Like you're talking like you could say like who has more uh, like authority there, like a Waldensian priest, like a Cathar priest, like or a Catholic priest, like at the same time, like. One of them has like the Roman Empire behind them and one of them doesn't, but like, you know, they're both priests. Sure, but comparative within their own class structure, I'm pretty sure that the priest people, regardless of who they are compared to the general population, are going to be more. I can't believe this is contentious to you. Wait, let's look at the other I'm side. Not, of this. No, I'm not. Well, are, are you trying to say that like you I'm think not... that a lot of like scientific breakthroughs just came from like normal random people? They just jotted down an idea and that was like. No, 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 no. That's not really what I mean. Although there are cases of like, you know, people like discovering things like purely accidentally. Um, and then having these like findings or whatever be be found to be like you know more useful by these uh, more whatever however you want to put it learned or educated. No, I, I, I don't think that is um, the case. Unless you have like like several like noteworthy examples, I think generally most research is funded, paid for, and done like by elites for elites because it's all like um, technological advancements that are like utilizable by them. Um, you know, whether it's ways to make capital more efficient, whether it's scientific advancements that you need to be highly learned to make advancements for. I, I just totally I don't know what you're. I don't know if it's like ideologically loaded because you're coming from a very left background that you want to have the feeling that like the average person is like. No, I easy. wouldn't say I'm from like a very left background. I'm from like a very mixed background. Like I've been through like I talk to pretty much everyone around the political spectrum. I read read a lot of like what you might call leftist stuff. I read a lot of rightist stuff. Sure. I, I, read, I just this, I just this, like this particular claim is just really wild to me. I don't, it seems like one of the oh, my, least contentious I things like in the world. This, yeah, go ahead. What am I misunderstanding? I think you're misunderstanding like the point that I was trying to make. Like my point was more less that like you're saying that like this battle of ideas, like in the immediate moment, it, it might appear that actually like a falsehood or a lie has uh, like one. It's like been more rhetorically persuasive, like in a particular moment. What I'm saying is that in the grand scheme of time, like in like a larger picture of time, that the truth uh, tends to win out over falsehoods. Um, I don't know if that is the case. Yeah, I'm not. I, 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 I then, don't, so I don't then my question is yeah. like, so then the question would be, right, like, do you think that they're like we truth has won out over falsehood over the last like 2000 years? Um, Are we closer to having truth than we were 2000 years ago? <laughs> I mean, in some domains, yeah, but I, I mean, it's hard to know, like, how we measure that. Do we measure that in terms of, like, what did we know to, like, what do we know today about 2,000 years ago? Or do we measure that based on, like, what do people today know? Like, th that's the difference, right? So, like, in some ways, like, we know a lot more about ancient history and what happened today than the average person living in that time period might have known about some things going on around the world because they didn't have access to the tools. But then in another sense, you know, half the people today in the United States believe the, the last election was stolen. So is that closer to the truth? Uh, like, I don't know. Or, or half the people... Think I mean, that, like, in a total sense. In, like, yeah, a I can't, sort of potential th sense. This is... It's such a an empty, hollow claim to talk about truth in a total sense because I think that you are devoid of all, like insight into making a good statement there when you start to say something like that like i, I don't even know how we begin to you measure believe in the, truth? Uh, is the truth i don't I, even that's a difficult one i well, i mean like we can do i, I it's, yeah I, I guess what what do you what do you mean when you say truth maybe that would be a good place to start i would say that it's uh things that are uh it's like a, the beautiful and the good you know the true is the beautiful and the good like okay it, i don't know anything about the true is the good uh, it's all the same. Like all of everything that's good is true, and all true things are good. Truth is a uh, truth. It reveals uh, things as they actually are, like reality, giving like a depiction of reality as it is, as opposed to a false depiction of that. I mean, what else is truth, right? I I mean, I guess it depends on on how you define it. Truth could just be uh, statements that logically follow axiomatic things. Uh, truth could be um, some statement about uh, like. Uh, like the fa like a fact like a descriptive fact the matter of a thing like things that exist in reality based on how you measure things uh, I, I don't know I guess it depends saying that truth is like the good and the beauty seems a little bit vacuous I mean like 
it's almost begging the question at that point, right? Like truth and beauty or, or beauty itself is incredibly subjective. So, I mean, if you ask some people we're closer to the truth today than we were before, it, you're really just asking them, like, are you happier with the world today? Would you rather go back to another point, right? So when you say something like beauty is subjective, would you say that's true? Yeah, of course. Like, why, how, how do you know that's true? Um, basically by tautology. Um, beauty tends to be our subjective enjoyment of a thing and subjective enjoyment things can't really be absolute truths unless you want to say it's true to an individual. Like it's true that you can have a subjective experience about something, but I don't think that your subjective experience um, like imparts some objective reality onto the thing that you're observing. But if like a hundred thousand people all subjectively experienced the same thing as beautiful. If a hundred thousand people all said that one plus one was three, no, it wouldn't mean anything. No. Or if a hundred thousand people. I think those people... are the same types of judgments. Aren't you saying ones like, this is like, like one plus one is two is not really the same thing as like, is this painting beautiful or something? Like, if, you right? were to show, if you were to play a hundred thousand people from the year, you know, 200 CE, some piece of music today, I don't even know if they would understand what's happening. They might not, they might totally not have an ear sure. for it. And if you were to play yeah. a bunch of people today, uh, music from like pre music history stuff, they might hear it and think it's garbage as well. So no, I don't think that you can rely on a person Maybe. to make an ad almost. I mean, absolute. you can do that. I mean, so, so I don't, I don't think you can make these absolute statements on like, what is beauty? No, I don't think so. Well, I mean, I think you can considering I have, you know, like, what do you mean? I can't like you, should, should people be arrested if they do make these? No, absolute hold on. Bodies? When I say, hold on, let's. Let's think for a moment. When I say you can't make a statement, do you think that I'm saying that you literally can't utter a statement? Is that what you think I just meant? I mean, I'm wondering what you mean by that. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you mean think I, I mean when I say you can't utter that statement? I think you mean I shouldn't. Yeah. It's like not true. Right. You can't say that. I, I mean, you can. I mean, hey, theoretically, well, you, you can. Mean, you mean you shouldn't say that. Right. Like, so you're saying that like one ought not to say such things. Right sure yeah okay we'll say that one you shouldn't yeah. say that because it doesn't make any sense yeah I, I don't know how you could ever like if i play you a song how can you tell me if it's objectively good or bad how could you ever say that um i've listened to enough music to to know i have good taste i'm like a good i'm good at listening to music so if i listen to a piece of music and you listen to a piece of music and i say i think that this music is bad and you think it's good how could we ever objectively resolve that dispute between us um, we would have a debate about it, right? And like we talk about our reasons for thinking it's good versus thinking it's bad, right? And yeah, then, but what if one of the reasons uh, is like, I like this instrument in the song and you're like, well, I hate that instrument in the song. How, how do we resolve that? Well, that would be one of many reasons, right? Like we wouldn't be able to resolve that actually. Yeah, that's the point. That's what I'm saying fine. is that at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of subjectivity from both of us in here that it's going to, Absolutely. by definition, have no resolution. So how can we ever make a statement about something being beautiful or not? Because we, because I want, because you want to express that if you feel that, right? Yeah, but like, I don't express you it as ever an call absolute anything truth. Beautiful? Yeah, but I don't express it as an absolute truth. I express it as a subjective evaluation. You think that anyone could have access to like an absolute truth? Uh, like, do you I mean like one exists. plus one equals two? Uh, oh, that so mathematically axiom axiomatic things. Sure, it seems to be the case if we believe in like faculties of reason and logic. You have to grant that like math follows. Sure. But I think that's fundamentally different than like a subjective evaluation on art. This is like, it's interesting. I don't know. You should read uh, some German idealist stuff, right? Like this is what their questions are all about, right? Like this is like what the, the critique of pure reason is all about, right? Like is, is, are these sorts of questions, like, can you make mathematical judgments like same way? Or does that, do they have like some sort of closer proximity to absolute truth? How do you know? What, what, what if mathematics is just like a game we play? You know, um, I believe the term is uh, mathematics has an, an an unfortunately uncanny ability to map onto reality. So it seems like that's probably not the case. It's something like that. So does language, right? No. What do you mean? Not at all. I don't think language has like an a, an uncanny ability to map onto reality. Like you know, when L you language describe is, like no language is free, you kind of know what it is. Well, no, l language is just when we say things, we're hoping that you have a similar thing in your mind that I have. It's not a thing that maps onto reality. It's the way that we communicate with each other. That's, it's fundamentally different than, I, I think, mathematical truths. Like we see reality Isn't that and true we of make mathematical truths, though. Like you're no, my understanding that is that one, like you can I use think one is the same thing. No, you can use mathematical things to like predict reality, right? I think like if you go like really heavy into physics, you can make mathematical algorithms that have nothing to do with things that we've observed before that end up being predictive of things yeah. that are true. I don't think language language isn't predictive like that. 
Um, they're, I think they're... it is though. Like, have you ever read like, like you, you read some like really insightful, like piece of literature or whatever. And it's sort of like, you can sort of see that, uh, these sort of social dynamics or like truths about you're, like human well, now relationships you've moved, or whatever. You've moved away from language now and you're moving on to something fundamentally different, like some like grander concepts that are given to you by language, like stories, like stories, like do stories have predictive power? Like when I, I tell you a story, like does no, that have any no. predictive power for no, you? No, it doesn't. Really? None? I, I, I don't you think you can like, I don't someone, think you can make like, like a scientific prediction with just a story, right? Like these are different. It's a, it's a well, fundamentally different type of question. Oh, okay. But like, let's say like you meet someone and they're, and like you, like you've heard and they're like telling you about this other person they met and they're saying that, Hey, this person, uh, they're going to, they came to my door, right? They came to my door and they said that they just needed to use my phone. So I let them in to use my phone and then they robbed me. And then uh, they and then this guy shows up at your door and he's like, hey, like, I really just need to use your phone. Do you think that story would have any predictive power to you in that circumstance? Like in a way, but it's 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 just fundamentally different than like a mathematical truth there. It's just a fundamentally different I, thing. Because you're, you're talking about like the difference between like inferencing versus like deductive truths. They're just fundamentally different things. Um, like, a, like a deductive truth means that the conclusions will always follow given a certain set of premises. Math is built around these types of axioms that given some sure. set of ar arguments or statements deductively, there will be a conclusion that will always logically follow. It, it has to by us being human beings, it will always follow. Um, things like a guy came to my door tomorrow, maybe another guy will show up and rob you. You don't know if that's 100% true. You're making inferences at that point. Um, it, it, that's more inductive or even adductive sure. reasoning. It's a fundamentally different type of truth. It's a different type of thing. Okay, but is that still a truth? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you're like for practical purposes, what is the distinction between between these types of truths or like these types of predictions? I, I just, I just told you the difference. The difference is that one is like deductively true, necessarily so. It like as in it logically follows. That 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 logically follows part. It means that given a set of premises, like a conclusion will always follow. Um, you don't have the same thing when we're just telling stories or or communicating things language wise. It's, it's just a fun. Oh, there's like lack of certainty is what you mean. Like there's more uncertainty in language than there is in math. Uh, I, it, it's okay. Wh where okay? Let's back out. What what are we trying to accomplish with this conversation? Are you trying to try to? Are you trying to say that like if I can tell a story with language that might predict a future event? then language can adequately describe something as being objectively true the same way that mathematics can because mathematics also makes predictions? It... Yeah, basically. Um, w without getting into like the, the weird, okay. Give me a, let me, give me a moment to think about this. <clears throat> It's like a very strong claim I have to make in order to like, you know, make my worldview make sense, right? So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to step into an area here, okay? I'm going to say that mathematics and the ability to understand mathematics, I think is something that is granted to us a priori. I think it's like a, it's an extension of a human's natural ability to reason. Um, so for instance, if I show About language, um, I'm not there yet. If I show okay. somebody one banana and they understand math and I sh and I tell them there's going to be like three bananas, the person can understand like what is going to be three bananas without ever av having to see three bananas. They, they have like in built inside, or if I show somebody like two and say four more are coming, like you have an, you have this a priori gift inside of you that allows you to understand deductively things that would give you the ability to grasp mathematics. That's, that's one thing. So be, be, being yeah. able to, yeah. So that's, so that's, this is one thing. Um, when it comes to language or, or what language is, um, in my mind, what language does is language gives us the illusion of being able to communicate thoughts and ideas to one another. That's what language tries to do. That's what we think it does. What language actually does is all of us have 
some set of experiences. We can call them qualia if you want, or just experiences. And we assign words to these experiences, and then we share the words with the experiences. And then when we communicate with each other, if I say a word, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm communicating an idea, but what I'm really doing is I'm saying a word, hoping that it brings up in you the same type of feeling that I get when I say the word. And then that's what language is. It's, it's a way for me to um, say utterances that are proxies for feelings and experiences that we have in the world. Do you agree? Yeah, I don't dis- agree with your, your, your vision of language. Okay, what do you disagree with about disagree that? Disagree with. So, so for instance, like you were saying that like these, it gives us the illusion of communication yes. eff- effectively. You're saying that like Correct. language is effectively like communication never like really occurs. We, Correct, like, we can't best- communicate, true, true, yes. So what are we doing right now? We are we just, hoping like, that we have the same set. Each other's levers. We have the same. Just trying to pull each other's emotional levers and like mo- manipulate each other into acting and responding the way we want them to. Okay. Well, so right now you and I are making a few assumptions with each other. One is we hope we have a shared language, which we do. We both speak English. And then two, we hope we have a shared vocabulary that we've heard of the same words and that we can have those same associations. So that's exactly what's happening. For instance, if I were to go up to somebody and I would say, hey, um, let's say it's a person that's been locked in a colorless room their entire life and all they have is like a box to sleep on. And I were to try to say to that person, hey, I have a red fluffy pillow. I can never communicate that idea. I know I know these debates. I know these debates. Wait, wait, hold on. It's okay. I'm not, it's you not, don't have to I'm, give me the I'm, It's not a debate. The analogies. I'm, well, okay. Well, I'm just, well, I, 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 you're I disagreeing with something on. that I consider I to be on. like incredibly like easy to no, understand. But, but, you, but I can't communicate instance, a quality to somebody. Yeah. Wait, let me say something. So right now we actually are communicating even though we do share like the English language. We don't actually share the same vocabulary because I, the way I would use words and the way you would use words, uh, we have mean them like in totally different ways. And taking that into account on my end, I can still communicate with you um, through the process that like I'm engaging in right now. But only because we have a shared basis by which to try to draw inferences about what those words might mean. We don't know 100% they're inferences. So like earlier when you were talking about literature review, I think you were like, oh, they recommended Mills. That's gross. But oh, dialectics by Hegel or whatever, that's based. Made me think like, okay, this guy's probably a little left-leaning. I don't know that 100%, but it was just like an inference that I drew, right? We can try to draw inferences about each other's language. I'm not not trying to say you're left-leaning. I'm just saying that even if we misunderstand or even if we don't think we use the same words, we can draw inferences. But if I were to start speaking to you in Spanish, you would have no idea what I'm saying. Our ability to communicate is gone, right? I actually do. I would do okay because there's a lot of similar roots, right? Like there's a lot of Spanish, like Latin, Latin innate roots like we are languages those two languages are like deeply tied together no through, like, hold on Latin. if you don't speak spanish and somebody starts speaking spanish you're not gonna be able to have a conversation if you spoke portuguese you could i'm not talking about portuguese and spanish i'm talking about spanish and no English. but i'm saying this is like specific like like this is a specific like subset though right like you know like there are some mutually unintelligible english dialects even though it's the same language no not I, you're missing the point completely. What I'm saying is that there is, there has to be some shared understanding of the words that we're using that we have both individually already mapped onto some concepts for us to have a conversation. I can't convey a new qualia, a new concept to you unless we have some shared foundation by which to work with. So have we ever produced a new concept or did we get all of our concepts at a certain point? I, when like we, we don't we, produce I, new concepts we ha- i think we have to have experiences with each other and then we build off of those um and, and then when we communicate with each other quote unquote communicate we're just saying words hoping the other person has the same foundation for experiences yes like we do have the same foundations for experiences we're human beings like in reality that doesn't like, mean we've always <laughs> had the same experiences well, we have most of the same experiences. That like, absolutely know, like might hands, not be true. Like... A woman might not be able to communicate what it's like to have a period or a baby. Um, one person in some area might not be able to communicate. She would to a woman. What? She would to a woman. I exactly, mean, like because a woman has the experience body. already. That's the point. That's my point. Yes. Yeah, but they, but like, but they could also communicate to men. It's just more difficult, right? It's more difficult to translate an experience, but it's not impossible. It, 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 if like, a man, you do if it a man, metaphor. no, it literally is impossible. Yes, <laughs> it literally you can't do it. Uh, no, you do it through a metaphor. You, no, like you can't imagine. Like, when you do it through metaphor, you have an experience. What you're, yeah, but what you're doing through metaphor or simile is you're trying to hope that you can map it on from another experience. So if I say I have a f- fluffy pillow, and yeah. you're like, I don't know what the fuck a fluffy pillow feels like. I can never understand. I'm like, oh well, it's like a cat. Then you're what you're hoping in your head is okay. Well, hopefully he's touched a cat before, and then I can map that onto that experience. But you're not actually creating. Yeah, you're not course. inventing a new experience in their head. You're just trying to map onto things that they already okay, know. Okay, but. 
if I'm okay, so like, what if you read like when you read a novel, like a fantasy or a sci-fi novel, right? It's mm-hmm. like taking place in a completely different, like in a new realm, and like there's alien creatures, blah blah blah, whatever you want to put it. You can identify with these people, and like you can like relate or empathize with people going through like situations that you've never gone through, and uh, it can no, like you can feel true, of ways about it. That's you can. You've never watched like a war movie. Oh, hold and, on, like, wait, wait. Okay, so first, like, you, you, Band of Brothers you use or like something? fantasy. When we talk about like fantasy or science fiction, the things that are talked about in these books are almost always universal struggles. If you're reading young adult literature, it's almost always going to be like coming of age. If you're reading something more mature, it okay, might so we do to... actually have a basic ground, right? Like everyone does. Yeah, actually there's going to be some sort of basic. Yeah, there's going to be some things, basic. Yeah, but right? assuming you've already had these experiences, yeah, right? of course. But you have to have the experiences. So even if already. you haven't had them yet. No, like you, if you, like, no, no, no. If you haven't like had them, 14, you're not going to have the. You, sort of no, you're not going to have the foundation for it. Some things about. No, you won't. <laughs> so you don't think you can know anything until you've experienced it yourself. Until you've had some level of experience, it yes. For so, like, wait, how can I ask how old you are? Uh, twenty-eight. Okay, so I'm thirty-three. Okay, so like when I in high school. This is something that was repeated to me all the time, right? A lot of the men and uh, a lot of the people going over to fight wars are just boys. They're young children. They're children. It's crazy. They're 18, 19. Well, when I was in high school, I was like 16, 17. That didn't mean anything to me. Like, okay, whatever. These kids are like in college, like, I guess. Okay. Or they're like seniors or whatever. Now that I'm 33 and I think about like drafts and people being sent to war that are like 18 and 19, that statement hits way different because 18 and 19, it's like, holy shit. It's like actually children. That's fucking wild to me. Um, there are a lot of things that I understand now as an adult, and I know you're the same way. You can't, unless you're just going to be like a contrarian, oh, right? No, for there sure. are some things that no, today you sure. understand being older, that agreeing. if they were told you when you were 20, you have no basis to understand these things. You oh, can't. absolutely. Because I was stupid. Because well, I was no, no, no. of illusions. But not because you were stupid, just because you lacked the experience. You just didn't no, have those experiences. No, because I was stupid. Well, but you were stupid because you didn't have the delusional. experiences. You're not delusional. No, completely delu- no. <laughs> you are. When you're a teenager, you're absolutely delusional. No, you're not delusional. Like, you you're just lacking experience. The world that you imagine... Well, yeah, but but like because of that, you like don't have like a real relation to reality. Like you, you're like LARPing. No, all the you're time not. LARP. You a have teenager. a real relation to reality. Your relation is that of a teenager. That's why when you read young adult novels, all yeah. of them center on like the struggles of being a teenager and like finding your right. Like look at like Harry Potter or fucking uh, the Bella yeah, vampire like, shit or whatever. It's all it's all of it is about the teenager like finding like, out who they are and their identity and shit. Yeah, but that's not exactly, bad. It's not delusional. That's normal. Well, it is because it ultimately becomes a tragedy. Like that's like the tragedy of adulthood, right? Is that like your your romance, like your delusional understanding of the world, like your romantic understanding coming from like a sort of more protected childhood into like engaging with the real world. Like ultimately, that's going to hurt you in ways, right? And then like when you like are like actually like an adult, like you can sort of take like that type of suffering more seriously than you could when you were a teenager, right? Sure. I mean, you you get a deeper appreciation for the good and the bad in the world as you become an adult, right? Yeah. So I would agree with you on there that like you can't like you have to like mature as like a person, right? Before you can like really understand. Well, anything. no, hold on. I'm not gonna let you use these words. It, it's not mature as a person. If you were to lock a 17 year old up in a room and bring them out when they're 27, they're not gonna be more mature. It's that you've collected a certain number of experiences as a person. This is why somebody who's 19 sure. can be more mature than somebody who's 22. If the 19 year old graduated high school when they were 17, 18, got a job and moved out, and the 23 year old is still living in a dorm doing college. Not that there's anything wrong sure. with that, but I'm saying like the experience sure, sure, sure. is important. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. You have to be like, this is like, like you could say this collecting of experiences is like education. Right? Sure, a type of education, yeah. Like if like you're like like for instance like if you've only collected the same experience over and over again for like twenty years like you probably haven't learned that much right sure but I'm just saying I'm like going back to the where we got off on this tangent from I don't know what what can you think of a single idea that you could communicate to me that um I have no foundation already for like could you communicate a truly new con- a truly novel concept that I have no shared understanding of to me. Sure, sure. Okay, I have a lot of these. My God, just think of like one. Right, I'll go with this. Like uh, John D. John D. The uh, Archmagus of Queen Elizabeth's court, right? Of uh, during like the Elizabethan times, the Tudor era of England, the time of Shakespeare, etc. He was a he was an alchemist and a magician and uh, various other things, but he had a very interesting interpretation of uh, the Trinity and what he described as uh, he described finding the quaternity within the Trinity, within like the Trinity of the Christian Godhead. What, what, what does that mean to you? Um, the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So how would you find the quaternity within the Trinity? I have, I don't know. And so this is a new concept to you, right? No, but it's, it's built off of prior concepts that I understand. 
obviously it's built off of prior concepts. But if I didn't have concepts those prior... built off of prior concepts. Okay, so I guess to go back to like the debate argument, right? Could you describe the color red to somebody without them having seen the color red and make them understand what red is? It's like a kind of irrelevant question when it comes to like whether or not we can build a new concept off of like the groundwork of existing concepts. But I don't disagree. Of course you can build new concepts off the groundwork of other concepts. That's possible, but we need that foundational understanding first. If you don't have it, then you can't do uh, it. That foundational understanding is like language, right? No, like, the foundational understanding is the experience. Language just tries to map onto that. If I get a tummy ache, if something hurts and I look up to somebody, I'm like, blarg, and I point to my stomach and then I have a pain. And later on, they point to their stomach. And they're like, oh, this hurts. And I'm like, blarg. And they're like, blarg. Now we have a share. Now we've created a word that we both understand maps onto something. If later on, Actually, I, get, if it, later on I get the same type of pain in my head and I point to my head and I go, hublarg. And they look at me and they're like, oh, ha blarg. Maybe they understand ha means head and blarg means pain. And now they're like, oh, I have head pain. Think, and now we've created yeah. that concept. I think yes. that's a very, that's like a very cutesy sort of like just so story for the creation of language, but that actually doesn't work. Um, like your model here that you provide, it doesn't work at all because you actually don't know if you're just both using the same word to describe like exactly. a disturbance around I agree, but now you're stumbling into, area. yeah, you're you stumbling into a whole, you're, no, you're stumbling into a whole. You have to say like, actually, no. I feel more like nauseous. I feel sort of more sure. like car yes, sick. I understand. Yes, yes. I'm like you feel more like cramps. Like yes, more of I like agree. I agree 100 percent with you. Welcome These to the difficulty things, right? in all of modern medicine and, and with philosophy and neuroscience. Yes, it's very hard to know if the things that we say to one another are truly actually mapping onto the same thing. We don't know that. It's and some some would argue it's impossible. Yeah, to know so that, you right? have to have like so you have to have like a refine you have to have like a refinement of language in order to like better communicate. No, it's, the exact it's precise concept. No, no, you can't to... communicate that. It's impossible. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Language is the best we've got but nobody will tell you like oh yes you can perfectly communicate one experience with other. you can't do that you just have to hope that they have a similar understanding of it but there's no way for you to know if it's the same you can never know that so you're saying that you can't perfectly do it but what you mean is that you can't certain like do it with absolute certainty we can't do it there's with anything like, you don't even know chance. if i'm having a conscious experience i could be a philosophical zombie to you you don't know that you have no idea what my understanding is of the world well, i don't i won't treat you might be tempting to treat you as a philosophical zombie but i'm trying my best not to wait hold on when I say philosophical zombie, do you understand what I mean when I say that? Know what you mean. Yes, I know what you mean. Okay, yeah, so I might not have a conscious experience at all, but there's no way for you to know that if all of my actions and everything are the same outwardly. There, there's no way for you to know that. Well, how do I know that I have a conscious experience? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, therefore, I am. I, it's the most foundational aspect of yourself, where, right? Is it a demon lying to you the really? entire time? Yeah. But, but I mean, like, really? even that I, is I, theoretically... I don't know that. He... What? Descartes has to Descartes has to disclose this to himself right through language, sure. and, and I like, think he didn't invent his own language, so so that's not really the foundational thing, right? He the doesn't have to, he doesn't have to disclose to that learn to language. Him. No, he doesn't have to disclose that to himself in a language. He's using language to communicate the concept to you, but he can intuitively understand it as well as he can. Do you think in language? Do you disclose your own thoughts to yourself like in language, or like how um, do you think? I like, personally do, but some process, people like? don't. But I do, yeah. Okay, so like when you think you actually are disclosing yourself to yourself through language, right? Um, for some things, yeah. Uh, but I mean, like I tend to have like a dialogue sure. in my head. So, but not everybody does. Like, do you so, think I you mean... could do that without language? Like, how, like what? You don't even know. Like, you can't even imagine what it'd be like to be a person but not utilize language, right? Like, it seems almost in impossible. Sure, but that doesn't mean that I'm getting the experiences from the language. I just can't imagine living and not being able to communicate with other humans. Well, you can get do you can you imagine things like when you like when you imagine can you like yeah. imagine like someone else's experience um to some extent i mean not perfectly it depends on the experience we're talking about like well, like let's say like you have like someone who's like extremely good at expressing their own experiences like they're like a master with their language such that they can like really mm -hmm. draw you like a realized imaginative yeah. vision Th think about what that means when someone is really good at doing that what does that usually mean it usually means that they're either they're either describing <laughs> something so well or they're using enough examples for an average person to follow along that they can map it onto their own experiences. That's usually what that means. But yeah, I mean, if somebody's just, Sure, or sure. things that are like analogous to them. Exactly, right? yeah, because you like, have to use analogy because you're looking for other experiences to map onto, yes. Yeah, because like metaphor is, an, like analogy, metaphor, all of these things are language because yeah. language is itself just entirely composed of metaphors and analogies. Okay, well, yeah, but that was my original statement. <laughs> You seem to say that we could communicate yeah, new yeah. concepts to each I'm other, and I'm saying things... that you need a foundation. Yeah. You have to have some shared experience Absolutely. originally. Okay, Absolutely. then I don't know well, we even let's... disagree on yeah. that. I think you've moved your position, but well, that's fine. What I'm okay. saying is that I think, 
I'm not, I, I really haven't. I'm saying that language, like you're saying that this is like this imperfect sort of like continually being constructed thing yep, that it has is. never absolute certainty. Absolutely. But, so, so you're kind of like disprivileging it as like a zone of like the disclosure of truth, right? Um, can, can you disclose truth with language? Yeah, no, I, I don't, not generally, no. I mean, I mean, it depends, I guess, on what you're talking about. I don't think that about. you can disclose truth with language, really. Like, I mean, it, depend, it depends on, it depends on, it depends on, math. it depends on what you're talking about, and it depends on what kind of language you're talking about, or what you consider a language. Because I know that you want to say, like, well, what about math? What if I communicate math with each other? But, like, theoretically, like, math is something that can be, like, communicated without language, or you can use a language to, but, like, the language isn't the math. The language is just mapping onto, like, mathematical concepts. It's a fundamentally different thing. You're not creating math with math language. Math is a language. No, 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 no. Math, math comes, is math a comes before for language, right? Language is not are... true. Okay, well, we just fundamentally disagree on that. If the whole I, universe, I if the true. whole universe were devoid of humans, would one rock and one rock still have like two rocks? If the whole world was divorced of humans. There would be no concept of any of these things because they're human concepts. Like there, there would be a totally meaningless question because there'd be no meaning in the world either. There'd be nothing to observe the world and be conscious of it. It would just be nothing. Okay. Um. If there's no humanity in the universe, then the universe is entirely believed the meaningless. exact time and place. Sure. I, yeah, okay. Um, I've, I'm, under, I'm familiar with this concept. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, what do you want to talk about next? I don't know. Do you like books? I'm actually a book guy. Like, I'm like, my, my podcast is called Read Books uh, VLT. Uh, Logo Daedalus, by the way, to shout myself self out here. Anyone interested? But I mostly like books. Like, what books do you like? Like, what's your favorite like novel? Um, I haven't read anything like recreationally for a long time. I just do. If I am reading stuff, it's usually like scientific studies and shit. Um, I don't even remember the last thing that I read for fun. Uh, it, oh, it's all like it's all like political shit. Like some boring local. Okay, like, what, what do you like? Um, in terms of fantasy, or in terms of like like anything. I, it just, it, just honestly, like, it depends on what's going on. If I have a big debate coming up, I'm maybe really interested in like World War II shit or like Russian history or something. But if it's just like on my own, I'm probably just like either playing games or listening to music instead or watching movies or something. Keep hating your life then, working class right. Andy. So did you ever go through, do you ever like read like the canon? They, as they say, like, you know, do like a great books course or something like. Yeah, unfortunately, Edo I and... did uh, AP English three and four. So we read a ton of like older, horribly boring shit. But yeah, so like the Odyssey and the Iliad and Beowulf and uh the stranger by camus and like and homer like this um we must have read poetry by homer i think it was in one of our really big english books but not like everything by him i think he has like a ton of shit right thought it was boring uh, yeah for sure um homer really? like oedipus what translation all shit. did you read i don't know but it was all it's incredibly boring to me the translation uh, sucked and they just uh, you read a bad translation then i because that shit rocks Honest to God, I don't think it has to do with a bad translation. I think it has to do with, uh, I think that when you're 16, 17, you don't, don't give a fuck about any of the shit or <laughs> any of these fucking stories. It's not true for me, personally. I loved reading when, like, my whole life, all I care about is, like, reading. Okay. Like, I loved reading. I read, I read that. I read, uh, I remember when I was in fifth grade, and I loved it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just love books. I like, I'm, like, I feel like reading is like really important because it like stretches your uh, historical imagination, especially to like read uh, things that people have been writing like from like thousands of years ago, et cetera. Just sort of like try to absorb like a large picture of human development and time. It's like what I'm interested in is trying to have like a really big picture view of things. Okay. Um, I feel like you're not as interested in that. I guess. Um, yeah, I think I am. I just don't typically get there by reading. It'll be through, or it won't be reading books usually. It just depends on what the subject is. Like, what other means can you like say you wanted to like know how like a Roman thought in the year like three hundred A.D. like could be through a documentary. It could reading. be through some exploratory essay. It could be through a video. It could be through some sociological study. It could be I don't but know. But like, I mean, like, how would you know like what they themselves like when you could just read themselves in like their own words, like Keep or like through a translation, I suppose. Class, like, is that like ultimately like the closest you can get? Um, maybe not necessarily. Just depends on, on what we're you're talking like, about. Like getting it mediated. Like if you're not reading primary sources, then you're just like getting it mediated by so many levels. Oftentimes, we lack you know? the understanding to contextualize. 
uh, primary sources. That's why if you're reading a lot of high-level stuff, usually you'll have like annotated versions or stuff will be in the columns explaining like what yeah, a particular phrase sure. meant or what they, so no, I don't even agree. That's not- You can that's, equip yourself. Yeah, sure. But I mean, like at that point, it's, 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 it's not even like you're, like the primary source wouldn't necessarily be the most important. Like a more important might be a secondary. Definitely like, the most important. Okay. Definitely, definitely. The primary sources are like so important. Like I always highly recommend people read primary sources, you know, like I feel like it's like a huge tragedy that like people don't read like Abraham Lincoln's like writings and like his letters and like John Adams and like the founding fathers because like we have all these amazing like primary sources. You can just like read people's debates like I love reading like the old flame wars, you know, of like all these people writing under pseudonyms during the Revolutionary War era. Like it's so much like our own present time. You know, like everyone writing under like like pseudonyms and like flaming each other and trying to get people kicked off of newspapers and whatnot. It's literally the same thing going on today. Sure. So like that's why I think primary sources are like you can't really get that sort of feeling of like how similar things are without I mean, like if you want to go like an extreme, like some sources. people would say that like reading translated text then won't even do this for you, right? This is why some people that study moral philosophy yeah, like won't do it unless they can true. read like German. So. It's definitely true to a degree like you can get more or less like better or worse like translations like ultimately like there is something lost in translation or there's things even added or whatever in translation like that's one of the biggest problems i think with like western marxists is that like the specific translations of marx's work into english have like totally botched some of like the vocabulary from like german idealist thought and it's like led to like these complete like Obama. aberrations of thought that people think are like marxist and they're like not at all they're like completely wrong it's like most of the time when people are using the term like abolish and like quoting marx they're like completing a they're like completely desecrating the source material okay so there's um, like a lot of stuff like that for sure like you gotta like be, if you want to like get into things you have to like be really serious you know like it takes a lot of work to like really read it's like a like a lifelong job gotcha think i don't know that's what i'm interested in i feel like you like uh you're more like you play uh strategy games do you, do you ever play advance wars by web nope oh do you ever play advance wars like at all no i've never heard of it before fire emblem yeah i've heard of that yeah like fire emblem but like with like modern army stuff basically okay. gotcha. it's like a nintendo franchise from like a long time ago it's just like a really basic like turn-based strategy game but uh, that's the only game I play. Uh, they have like an online service for it. It's pretty fun. You should check it out sometime. You like RTSs, like you like StarCraft, right? Like yeah. you probably dig it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Got a really deep, deep uh, competitive uh, scene. Gotcha. I'll well, I'll consider it <laughs> if I have time. Yeah, I mean, it's probably better than Elden Ring, but I don't know. Elden Ring, I heard, is uh, okay. I mean, like it's interesting to me because like I feel like you engage a lot with like video games like video games are kind of like they have like an element of the literary to them like sort of um very subvertly you know like like uh elden ring is based off of so much of like western fantasies influence in japan you know um yeah i mean depending on the video game you're playing sure probably. aren't you like fighting like i i was watching you fighting bosses or something and uh they describe someone as being from like the empyrean uh maybe I don't know it's in the lore that's like in a it's like christian that's like esoteric christian theology and stuff so like you're playing this game which is like full of like you know like renaissance like uh esoteric christian theology and things like this and like you probably have no idea probably not i mean when it comes to japanese stuff there's a ton of influence especially from like world war ii and stuff um and a lot of their art and media and so but yeah i, I imagine that's probably the case yeah yeah, like that's one thing that I find really funny is like people really like video games and it's like they play these games and they, like they, you're not even equipped to like understand what like the artist who made the game is trying to say with it. Sure, but I mean that's true of literally all media, right? Really? I don't know. It's, I, I feel I, I'm like pretty good at reading. Sure, but I mean it's I'm like, sure there's I like a ton of movies that you've watched that, like that you've probably looked mind. and you don't like recognize that like some shots are being copied from other films or they're paying like. Uh, I'm pretty good on that though. I like film a lot. Okay, never mind. You like just, film, you know are you like more of a film guy? Yeah. I know a lot, dude. I've devoted my life to this. This is what I do, you know? Like I take it I'm I take it as like a responsibility. Like I'm gonna be telling people things, especially things that like disagree with mm -hmm. sort of like mainstream shit. Like I have a responsibility to be like really fucking good, like knowing a lot and like reading a lot, like being very devoted to like research. That's what I do. I don't know. Do you like movies more? Are you more of a film guy? 
Um, yeah, I guess probably more than at least reading at least. Like manga? Um, not really. I, I don't like comics at all. Okay. No, I feel like I like. I feel like you're probably gonna. You're like probably hitting like diminishing returns on like. Or I don't know if you do you feel like you're like cool with like how you understand the world right now? Like, do you want to learn more about the world or do you feel like you pretty much get it? Um, I feel really good about my understanding of the world and I'm trying to constantly expand my understanding of the world. So, yeah, I'll probably continue to do so. How do you go about like expanding your understanding of the world? Super depends on the topic. I can't generalize that, right? Just recently, we had a whole bunch of conversations related to trans people. So I had a whole bunch of like trans fans like email me and their experiences like being trans. Like I'm not. Do you ever read about the history of transgenderism? Depends on if I'm arguing the history of trans experiences or not, or if I want to know what people's modern day like trans experiences are. Do you ever hear about? Do you know that there was a transgender Roman emperor? Um, nope. Elagabulus. Okay. Didn't say Simon says. So did that was a big thing in Rome. It's actually pretty like trad. It's like one of the fun things I used to talk to the right right wing guys about be like this is all very trash it's all just roman stuff to come back like we're just like roman pagans in america okay we have the coliseums you know like the super bowls just like gladiators you know our celebrities are like basically like the gladiators you're a gladiator you know you're like the esports gladiator and now you like fight like you know people politically you like went from like you're like like, what, you're going to, like, be the gladiator who gets into the Senate, you know? It's kind of Roman. Okay. Do you feel me on that? Do you feel me on America being Rome? Uh, maybe to some extent, but... All right. I mean, Any... we are an empire. Sure. Do you agree that America is an empire? Uh, yeah, probably, I guess. Depends on how you define empire, but sure. I mean, then you'd say it's not a republic, right? So it's not a democracy. It's like an empire. Well, I mean, it's obviously a democracy, but... You think so? Yeah, of course. Why? Because we vote on our elected leaders. That's all it means. Yep, that's what a democracy like, is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all it is. Pretty big it part means of you it. vote on your elected leaders, really? Yep. That's not how it worked in Athens. Okay. That's not how it worked in like the Italian Republic, the Venetian Republic, or you know, the, trading. The public didn't vote on anything in there, Carthage. but they still call them democracies. And vote on the leaders, no. What, what did they vote on? voted on issues okay so then they voted on things right we have a representative democracy we can't vote on every single yeah, issue but, so we vote on leaders who that... voted were citizens citizens voted and they voted on issues because they Simon would like says... organize like the senate just the families like the like the heads of the families of the city right is it so they didn't elect their leaders their leaders well i guess you could say they chose like amongst their like families or their clans like the person that was going to represent their household in the senate right but like they didn't like and like elect their representative like i yeah, mean sure. like, democracy can work in a ton of different ways right but typically as long as there's like some sure. representation from the public and either the leaders of the policy think russia has a democracy um i don't think so no they vote um i don't i don't i don't know actually no actually i think i might have to be agnostic on that i'm not 100 percent sure i'd have to go don't know to if it. they vote um <laughs> i don't know if their votes matter Oh, you have to. Your votes have to matter for it to be a democracy. Yeah, I okay. mean that's kind of the point of voting. Feel right? like your vote matters. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, I don't feel like mine matters. I don't vote. Well, like that's most probably Americans. why your vote doesn't matter then. Most Americans don't vote because most Americans understand that our votes don't matter. Mm, I think most Americans don't vote because they're apathetic of the process. Your votes obviously matter because are they apathetic? Are apathetic for because a variety of it reasons, doesn't matter it absolutely does matter how do we, how do we choose our leaders it it's based on who gets the most votes <laughs> don't yeah don't choose our leaders really simple yeah did the establishment choose trump uh in a way yeah especially in 2020 okay and they'd rather they, they wanted him over hillary like the gop at least a good a large enough segment enough of the donors did you could look at like Trump's donors in 2016, most of them weren't his donors in 2020. There's like a Didn't big Hillary Clinton like, have an overwhelmingly larger amount of donors than Trump did from large monetary sources? Yeah, but Trump so that, also... So that like, statement is like totally contrary donors to from, your like, the Mercers. No, 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 no. He had like, he got a ton of money from the Mercers in 2016, but they didn't give him money in 2020. Well, okay, I don't know what that's supposed to prove. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm just saying, like, at a certain point, like, you know, the they the establishment did approve of having Trump, right? They didn't like they didn't do a Bernie to him, you know. 
I guess he couldn't. He was like more anti fragile, but like nobody obviously, had to like, do with Bernie, Bernie to him because won. Bernie Bernie couldn't have won. Bernie lost horribly in his own party. But why? Class. Because he's not because he's not that popular. <laughs> why isn't he popular? Because his policies aren't that popular with the American people. What policy is unpopular? Uh, Medicare for all was not as popular as he thought it was. The fixation on education, the kind of like fixation on like the socialist aesthetic, is not that popular. Um, yeah, I don't know. Basically, any number of that because because um like like consumer research and like PR firms and stuff did polls on like interest groups and they found that these things didn't poll as well. That's like your how you're gonna say this is like true yep. is because like. Based on the widespread like opinion of like American people, yeah. us that? I'm sorry. Did you talk to every single American so you know that that's not true? Or oh no, I don't feel the need to like like I just make statements that like I like I don't I don't care about like trying to buttress like a sociological point with like polls and things like that. I just so how do you of, understand you sociological know, kind of, issues? Um, through like science, like in larger science. How do you think? Like, how do you like, think my, social my, sciences? My ability to how do you think social? I don't sciences? believe in the social sciences. Okay, how do you use science? Believe in hermeneutics. Then? What does that mean? Hermeneutics. It's the science of like reading. It's like how to interpret. It's like this, the science of interpretation. What are you reading to figure out what most people in the United States think about a certain policy? I read themselves. Like, you know, I read like a lot of different people from like all over the place. So, all you over the so you've read the opinions of all the Americans. Like what, your statement doesn't mean anything. I've read a lot nonsense, of opinions. Right? That doesn't matter. From a lot right? of different people. At some point, you're going to read so many of them that you might as well just be doing polling. <laughs> like, because you're talking about like getting statements from like a ton of people. I don't think that's true because polling, polling only gets people who are attracted to like doing polling, right? Or like, you know, who are going to like sign up for a sociological study to be polled or sure, whatever. And reading is Whereas, only going like, to find people that feel like writing things down. I mean, like your selection true. bias either way. True. I don't. I'm not. Ex I'm not claiming this to be a scientific process. I'm saying you literally just said you that, like to use science to figure this. These. I mean, in, out. I mean, in the high sense of science, not in the delimited sense of like. So, like in an a scientific way, then. so in things that have nothing to do with science, but you like to use the word because it makes you feel better about the process, or because whatever you're describing is not. Scientific I'm using the at word all. as Leibniz. As Leib. Do you know Leibniz? No. Nope. I'm using science the way Leibniz would use the term science. I think you. You're more of a Newtonian. You're saying that well, that's science, but like, you know, hermeneutics is not science. Okay, that's fine. I just got confused because you said that's fine. Science, but okay. I know. I know. See, see, like, we run into confusion sometimes because we use words, but we mean different things by them, right? Mm -hmm. But we can still communicate our concepts. We can also understand, like, the disjunctions and, like, possibly the history of the disjunctions of these definitions, right? Sure. So there's like a whole genealogy to, like, the synony like, synonyms and, like, what words mean. Like there's a history to a word's meaning. It's like beyond our own opinions of it, right? Okay. Um, hey. Anything else? I don't know. I mean, do you wanna do you wanna talk to me about anything? I don't know. I'm just like picking your mind. I feel like you're you're like you're interesting to me because you're like a very like you have all of the correct liberal opinions. Like you, it's like you might as well have gone to like an Ivy League university and gotten trained in all of this shit to like have the correct opinions like as a liberal because like you did it yourself you know it's like amazing to me like you have the exact same arguments as like a, an adjunct ta at the, like the philosophy department of harvard okay um but, like just saying yeah like, well i like you're the, like uh, utilitarian i like to be the, uh, like the mainstream safest opinions you know that's me what am i gonna do it's not mainstream i'm saying you have like you've adopted like very high prestige opinions and though that's not your like class background like you're like from i know we have the same fucking background really i know your background like you're not you're like a working class you're like from the working class you're not from like sort of like bourgeois sphere you've like ascended into it okay right? but like that's not where you're from sure um yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to engage with that, but okay. Um, no, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just saying, like, my. No, I understand. I'm just I, like, I, like, I, I don't. Um, yeah, I guess I don't think of my opinions that way. Like, do I match up enough with like the Ivy League elite, uh, ruling class opinion structure, or whatever? I don't know. It's not what I think about, but. I mean, you kind of do because, like, that's like where all of your like when you point to like authorities, right? Like, you're pointing towards this like nexus of like elite like professional academia mm -hmm. you like really like the like authority of like the educated right um i like to trust like authoritative um i, li I like to trust like empirically validated processes i think is important um and then if people want to have more qualitative discussions i think that's fun too as long as we understand the limitations of those discussions 
So when I'm trying to figure out what people believe in, that, in the United States. Do you think that States, there's I limitations? Think, yeah, there's limitations to everything. The, yes. Okay. So, uh, like, is there limits to like the empirical data, like the study, like the study of empiricism? Does empiricism have limits? Um, sure, everything has limits. Depends on what we're talking about, right? Like, we can't empirically validate okay. art as good or bad, for instance. <laughs> that would be one limitation. Yeah, you can't empirically validate someone's politics as good or bad, right? Correct. Cool. Yeah. So then it comes down to like, really, we're discussing like, what story, like, what world do we live in? Like, do we? Well, but live, we can like, like empirically validate like how many people support world, like a given policy, right? That might be an important question to ask. I don't really think that matters that much, frankly. My view of the world, like, what people like are trained to think about something, doesn't even mean that they're necessarily trained to like say what they really think but like a lot of the times people are just sort of like repeating like received opinion sure. they haven't really like investigated the matter for themselves or that's probably the vast majority of people's opinions on the vast majority of things in society yeah because most people yeah, don't really care that much i agree sure i agree i think that's by design like you know like we have a massive structure for the I molding think that's of by the design i think that life today is really complicated and i don't think we've ever been that informed in this the history a... of all of mankind on, on every single issue i don't think that's the case no. Well, I would say that like when you when you're talking about the Republic of like the early Americas, I was like the most literate, like engaged population in human history at the time. I know? don't know if that's true. It, it, back then, weren't we? It originally... is true. You just got to read it. You got to read their debates, man. They were like, quote, they were. Hold very on. I, wait, up. wait, hold on. Back then, didn't we? We didn't even have like normal citizens voting on the president. No, I thought that only people with like land could vote and shit and literacy. See, Rachel, uh, not that great. Depends on what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about Massachusetts. I'm talking like about I'm talking about the century. early United States of America, which is what you were talking about. Wasn't it true that back then that like, the Republic? Okay, the the thirteen colonies, like. Well, the thirteen colonies weren't all one thing. They weren't governed as one thing. There were various like types of governance in the. Do you think colonies. the literacy the rate in Massachusetts was it higher than like the literacy rate in the it was United higher States? Higher than anywhere in the world had laws for public literacy. They were called the old deluder Satan laws. It was like a public need to educate everyone on how to read so that they wouldn't be like ensnared by Satan, of course. Do you think that the literacy rates in Massachusetts then were higher than the literacy rates in the United States now or? Yeah, I actually probably think they are. Like we have a very high like effective illiteracy rate, like literacy rates have actually been declining. And this is before black people were allowed to learn how to read, right? Well, these are the people who would like later be teaching black people how to read, right? Like we're talking about the Puritans. Like they, they, like black people. Like that's one of the saddest things. No, black people Keep had like a very strong literate culture. Class, they Andy? really valued the written word and like learning how to read because they were disbarred from it. So like they, like I think they still do. I mean, I think if you're just gonna say there's like a literary culture in America, it's like mostly like you know comes out of like rap music and stuff like that because these people are like poets and they like really value language and the power of language. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's like what I care about, you know, like, I care about like language, like language to me is like humanity. Like, that's our like defining feature is like that we uh, use and have created language. Gotcha. Yeah. So I think that's like important stuff. But yeah, no, like, I don't know how much you know about like the history of like earlier America, but like, you know, like, it was the most literate society, like of all time at a certain point. Because it was like a public need and people took everything like very seriously because they were running uh, their society as like simultaneously like a church and a state. Like it was all tied into one thing. So like the questions of like, how do you run a church like a ecclesiastical policy and like, you know, Presbyterian policy, et cetera, was the same thing on like how you run elections, and how you like determine the distribution of land and the distribution of resources within a society. Like, you know, that was like what the whole Massachusetts Bay Colony was about. It was like a communist experiment. <clears throat> okay. Um, do, Tony, my chat wants me to ask you, do you, do you believe in T-Rexes? I believe in T-Rexes? Yeah. What is what is what do you mean? Do I believe a T Rex? What does it mean to believe in it? Well, that I know what that a means. Real thing. He just wants to know your some guy in my what chat wants mean? to know opinions about paleontology in general, I guess. And then he's asking about T Rexes. Oh, I mean paleontology is sus just because of like who was involved in like it was like the oil industry and they were like trying to there's a lot of sus stuff about like archaeology and the petroleum. Wait, Eric, how did you know he was going to say that? Wait, what uh, the fuck? I don't know. 
I'm not, uh, I'm going to let it go on that. Cause frankly, when I was a child, dinosaurs were like reptiles and now they're birds. So, you know, was it real dinosaur know, it was invented by the fact that oil barons like financed the, paleontologists. The evolutionary history. Wait, how did you know this earth? That have ever roamed the earth for all time. Like I'm not that confident about our state of knowledge on that. Okay. Interesting. What did you think about my, you, were you, you said initially you watched me talking to Haas. What do you think about my debate with Haas about Ukraine and Russia? Oh, I mean, I'm definitely side way more with Haas. I mean, I studied Russian, like I can speak Russian. I have a lot of like Russian friends. I'm definitely more aware of like the history of Russia and the Soviet Union and that whole area. So, I mean, do you, if you want to get into that, like we can talk about it, like how far back do you want to go? We're talking about Ukraine. Yeah. Why do you think that, um, Obama. do you think that Russia's current invasion of Ukraine is justified? I'm curious. Yeah, I'm very much anti-NATO. The NATO's just like, NATO's just Obama. the fourth Reich, dude. Like literally, NATO. Okay, wait. I just like, realized I don't care about this. Never mind. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Okay, you don't care. Right. I, it's I, gonna be I, difficult I just, to talk about. It. I just I don't I, care. You haven't read Obama. that much about it. You don't care. Yes, yes, yeah, that's I got right. it. Um. Okay. Is there any other thing you want to go over, or? Uh, I don't know. I really want to talk about how NATO is the fourth Reich because Obama. apparently that's really controversial for you. Um. And that was the that was what Hitler wanted. Hitler wanted NATO. I know. I'm that was sure. like that's, that was his goal. His goal was the United States of Europe. Yep. That's what he wanted. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, hey, listen. Real. True. Obama. It's been fun. We've kept okay. it real. All right. The, the handler. The handler's out. Get him off. Talk about the Fourth Reich of NATO. Get him off. Obama. It's all right. It's been good talking to you. I hope it's been amicable. I hope I'm not too annoying. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm just interested. I feel like you need Obama. to read more. I don't know. Like, there's not you. You can't have as much of like an in-depth conversation about like you know the development of philosophy and history through time and shit if you like don't read. Like, it's just gonna you're gonna be Obama. stuck talking about like the news of the week or whatever while you play Elden Ring. Yeah, I guess it's interesting because it feels like you've read a lot. You claim to, and you use words like you have, but you have a really Obama. difficult time engaging critically with conversation, which is always interesting. I don't meet many people like that. Um, you could also be learning like about a Raynor. Socratic inquirer. It's not a Socratic like, inquirer. I'm... So like when we have the conversation related to Obama. language, you have a very hard time like actually critically engaging with what I'm saying. And if you've actually read as much literature on language as you've said, um, well, it seems like it should be really, I was just about to bring that name up if I knew Obama. you were going to. I don't think, I don't, either you haven't or you, you're a good reader, but you don't understand the material, which is interesting to me. Um, you read the philosophical <clears throat> investigations? I have, um, I have a very bad engagement with literature because I'm pretty, Obama. I'm just lazy, honestly. Okay. Well, um, you should read the philosophical but investigations. But it's crazy that if you've read so much, I don't know how you lack the ability to critically engage with the ideas in a conversation. That's always scary to me. I don't know if you care, but I think you're, you're probably used to I like feel rambling. Like, I feel like I am critically engaging. Yeah, you haven't like, critically you, engaged with anything. Uh, you're kind your of like, audience? you're like, you, you pull your audience whether or not they feel I've critically engaged in the conversation. Sure. Do you feel like... I don't know. I, I feel like I have. I don't really know what you mean. Maybe you mean critical engagement and like a specific type of like performance of rhetoric. But I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, should I explain it before I pull it? When I say critically engage, um, what I mean is there's like there's multiple stages um, of reading something and assimilating it and then being able to deploy it in a conversation effectively. So it's one thing to read a book. It's another thing to read it and understand it. It's another thing to read it, understand it, and then be able to synthesize the concepts into something that you understand. And then it's a fourth thing to be able to take those concepts from the book and then argue with somebody else and apply the concepts that you've learned um, fluidly in the conversation. That's what I would consider to be like mastery of a, of a material, basically. Um, Usually okay. when I see I people like that have, that. no, not at all. I don't all. know. Usually I feel like primitive okay. um, material will be like you saying, know, um, I'm, I'm about <laughs> to, I'm know? trying to explain, but you won't let me explain, right? So like a, a primitive yeah. engagement is something that I'm very used to, um, which you've done a couple times. I've had a couple people do this. Usually they'll just say like, oh, I've read this or, oh, you should read that or, oh, I've read this. But that's not really good use of the material. Oh, are you talking about the experience? Um, how you no, have, like, hold on. Let's, wait, can experience? I just finish? Let me just finish, right? So that, that's one way, right? Um, there is a couple people that I've read, uh, not that I've read, that I've argued with that have really good engagement literature. Um, so one person on this platform, if you want to go talk to her at some point, The Silly Serious, she's read a lot of social um, um, social science related or like feminist writings and everything. When we're having a conversation, she might say something like, oh, like, I understand what you're saying here. It reminds me of this concept brought up by this writer and she explains it in this way. And I think that's how that applies to this conversation. She, like that's, that would be like a critical engagement with a conversation. You're taking something you've read. Okay, that would be more useful it. for you is what you mean. 
No, not useful. It, sh it shows that you understand the material and you understand the conversation. That's what that's what the actual engagement with the critically engaging with the material and conversation would mean. Hey, what do you what would you like me to critically engage with more? I think I could do that. Well, I don't. I, well, it sounds like you basically have like a you've got like a view of the world that I don't want to say is conspiratorial, but you have like in your mind some view of the world. And then I guess you have some books that you've read that kind of like touch on that or like like engage with that or intersect with that but like you don't really have much interest in talking to or like really ironing out those differences or making them more concrete um let me give a more more uh definable example of this oftentimes when i speak to people like you you want to talk in very grandiose grand narrative terms without ever really getting into i don't want to say getting into the weeds or something but being a little bit more grounded to your examples and instead that we hear like oh like what are society's problems today well society's problems today are that the internet came out of like the World War II Manhattan Project and the US military yeah. global industrial empire process built this concept that atomized all of society in such a way that we can't truly relate to each other because the empire that America has and the advertising that we exported to the world um, eliminated our ability to understand each other. It's like it's like some very grand, it's like- Yeah, we created a virtual society. Yeah, exactly. The, and these are like society. fun things to like masturbate over and talk about, but you're not really not, saying- What do you mean? This is reality. You, That's you're, not, you're not saying anything are, meaningful or, or, or anything insightful. Like nothing you've said in this you know, conversation like, oh, is like, oh wow, that's really interesting it's all just kind of oh, like that, built on this like very flowery pointless useless language yeah no nothing it's you not said is flowery interesting. pointless that's all like of this has been flower of, pointless that's it's the material history of the internet okay it's like how it came to be gotcha Why is that not interesting like you're using it like it's informed everything about our lives N nothing nothing about it it's just no nothing about this has been like informative or, or talks about how we're informed by it. it's all just kind of like mute like self-masturbation basically it's like obama i don't think i'm being masturbatory i think that's You're not very, absolutely uh, very being good faith of you. i i well i'm trying to explain something to you i'm trying to like i we could go into the weeds and things i could explain to you how nato like turned into the fourth right like we have a conversation about that like you don't want to talk about like the specifics of it. Like, sure. How is NATO like? Saying, like how, sure. How is NATO it. like the Fourth Reich? Go ahead and tell me. I'm curious. Uh, do you know about like Otto Skorzeny or like any nope. of like the SS officers who nope. were moved into like NATO powers like after World War II? Nope. Uh, well, a lot of the like high command, the Nazi high command, like obviously like at the end of World War II, were like, well, we want to go to war with the Soviet Union, right? Because we don't like these commies either. So we who's good at who's good at fighting the communists well the nazis obviously so we just put them in charge of nato and that was the okay and yeah it was that's what um i mean that's like if you read like churchill and like some of the other people they were like wow we went to the wrong like we fought Are these the wrong people, people, people that moved into nato high command you're just talking about like scientists that we drafted from germany talking about like adolf adolf Husinger, a adolf h-e-u-s-i-n-g-e-r adolf Husinger. also why would we even was... say that nazis are good at fighting the russians didn't they technically lose well, you know, there's a lot of questions about that, right? I mean, if you read uh, Gravity's Rainbow or, you know, a lot of uh, more interesting histories of World War II, um, there's a lot of, like, collaboration there. Like, what's going on in Switzerland that whole time, you know? Weird stuff, man. World War II is a very complicated situation. Okay, so wait, so you yeah. don't think that Germany lost to Russia or you think that they were they fake lost or that other people made them lose or i think that the industrialists and like the ancien regime within germany uh was opposed to hitler but were not necessarily opposed to fighting the soviets right like they were pro fighting the soviets but they didn't really quite like hitler so they allowed they collaborated with like the british intelligence services right like that's how we had like all of the nazi documents like we had all of their communications throughout all the war because like the ancien regime and like the industrialists the people with like the real power in nazi germany like outside of sure. the state or like in like the okay, sort of deep okay, state okay, of nazi okay. germany okay, they understand. collaborated across lines because they wanted uh, to like join up like this mm -hmm. sort of like European defense against communism. Like they were like, like Hitler never wanted to go to war with Britain, like, you know? And in fact, like the royal family, like a lot of people in the royal family were really close with the uh, Nazi commanders, right? Because like, there's this whole world of like hereditary aristocracy, which is like tied together. And like, they were using the Nazis basically to like defend themselves against like the communists. Gotcha. Who, you mentioned a. That's like what we're doing right now. Do you, you mentioned like a Scorzini guy. Yeah, Otto Scorzini or like Adolf Hosinger. There's like a bajillion. People. Somebody this mentioned like that this guy escaped imprisonment in Germany and died an outlaw in Argentina. No connection to NATO whatsoever. Is that true or is that guy lying? I'm saying there's a lot of sus Nate like NATO people. Like I'm saying all the well, things how, that is that guy was that guy a NATO person at all or was that just like a random? Well, let's name? go with 
we're going to go with Adolf Heusinger. I like talking about Scorzani because he has a wild, wacky story. That's the only reason I brought well, what, up Was he part of NATO if we want to talk or... about someone specifically, yeah. if we want to talk about someone specifically, we're talking about NATO. It's Adolf, H-E-U-S-I-N-G-E-R. Okay? He was the chairman of the NATO Military Committee. Okay? There's like one of many people. I can bring up others. There's like Hans Speidel. He was the head of NATO forces in Central Europe. There's a bajillion millions like tons and tons and tons it's like just the tip of the fucking iceberg on this but uh yeah like the nazis the nazi high command uh were very much involved in nato right and like we were running like operation gladio to like fuck with the italian communists and things like that in their elections the new terrorist attacks we do a bunch of shit we arm neo-nazis all over the place we arm neo-nazis all over latin america this is like what the cia did after they did it like world war ii as like the oss or like even before that, it's the British security coordination. Like, this is how the British Empire ruled the fucking world, and it's how we rule the world. It's like why we're talking about winning information victories, right? Like, we're talking about the information warfare of the thing. It's because we have a massive public relations empire, so we can create a completely fictitious reality in which us arming neo-Nazis with billions of dollars is us defending European democracy. You know, it's literally the same thing as what happened during World War II. Sorry, hold on. I'm just reading because I'm just curious. It's fact check. I'm just curious. Yeah, no. You know, obviously they're not going to teach you this in school, dude. Like, right? Like, they want you to support NATO. So, like, why would they teach you about this? The the news isn't going to talk to you about this. Like, the liberal news isn't going to be talking about this. Like, the people who are funded by like the military industrial complex for the same donors, the same web of financiers, like, they're not going to be like, oh yeah, by the way. Let's talk about like the dark history of NATO. <laughs> We're the good guys. Okay, let know? me just uh, let me ask a question. Okay, because my World II, War II history sucks. The SS is not necessarily the German military, right? Like this was an extra like paramilitary organization, right? It was like the German CIA. Yes. It was, like, the Nazi yeah. Okay. CIA. Correct. Adolf Hissinger was this guy part of the SS? It doesn't look um, like it. it looks I mean, like he just he looks like this guy was like serving the German military for like thirty fucking years, like even but way before Hitler, like. Under the German Empire, the Weimar Republic, and this guy even Army tested, General this guy, Staff of the Wehrmacht. This guy, sure, this guy um, also testified, uh, and he testified during the Nuremberg trials as well. Was this guy like a horrible, evil person, or? Well, I mean, the question is not like, like, what do you like? Do you care about like the personal morality of this person or whatever? Like, what I'm saying is that like this power structure like merged well hold on i'm just uh, well so one thing like there's like the whole like mixing everything together to make like conspiracy sounds right so this guy wasn't part of like the ss at all right he was the head of the wehrmacht but like we can i can find people who are involved with the ss who work for nato like is that what uh, you want well you've named two names so far when i've looked into both of them your claims are totally bullshit on both and then you brought up a fictional story to talk about it so i'm just curious like because when you tell me when you tell me that gravity rainbow is not a piece of fiction it's a it's a piece of it's a historical fiction right like a lot of it is not fiction it's like a fiction that's like contains a lot of like really like esoteric history because at the time thomas pynchon right he worked for uh boeing i believe and he had access to like the v2 papers from sure, World gotcha. War II. okay yeah, so he was everything, actually... everything so who else were there were there actual like nazis like horrible nazi people that made it into nato can you try a third name i'm just curious because that's a new thing what do you mean me. what do you mean like horrible like i'm just telling you like, like not I'm just not somebody not just military. somebody that was like in the german military like i don't know what do, like, what do you what do you you want someone who's like what like well what, your original plan because you, you tried to say that nato was like the fourth reich that's your thesis yeah, and one is. of the supporting statements you made was that we drafted a lot of horrible nazis from like the ss and shit into nato and i've looked up two of the names not, you've mentioned I'm not making one was had nothing to do no no hold on Yes, you. Whether you want to or not, we're not even at the moral part. We're just descriptively. I'm curious if the original Nazi, uh, if the original NATO was staffed by a ton of Nazis. You've given me two names. The first guy had nothing to do with NATO. The second guy had nothing to do with the SS. Um, so I'm just curious if this was actually the case, or if it's just like another random claim. What, what was what's like a third guy that was like drafted from the SS or from like the Nazi part of Germany? Like who, who was drafted to NATO from here? You said NATO was the Fourth Reich. That's what I'm. So I'm curious. What is there any other connection? Okay. Or? So what was the Third Reich? What was the goal of Hitler, like of the Nazi Party? What did they want to do? I don't know. To fuck, span some Aryan Empire across the all of West and some moral tradcon bullshit or whatever. I don't know. I'm sure he had a lot like of like NATO. Goals. 
Um, no, not like NATO. NATO, NATO is a member, is, is right. a bunch of independent countries that join if they want to with an organization that only is there to provide military assistance. We don't have any external controlling things. There's not like a NATO government. That they have dictates bases. The... Is there, are there NATO bases on yes. country soil? But are there, NATO, are there policies in these countries being controlled by the United States? No. Yeah. No. What do you mean? They are. Like what? We spend a lot of money controlling the policy, like the Nord Stream. I hear so much about this. I haven't read enough about this. So w tell me why you think NATO controlled the Nord Stream 2 shit. Because we want a Europe to buy oil and natural gas from America and not from Russia, obviously. It, so tell me how NATO, did, what, did NATO like force countries to accept this or did they vote on it and want to accept it? Do you know the Rand Corporation? You ever heard of I've the heard Rand of Corporation? Them, yeah, they get cited all the time. Yeah, you should read uh, they have a paper i'll look it up for you right now um they had a, they planned it this whole thing out like this isn't like a uh, crimean i always hear the north stream 2 shit side and i haven't like read enough about it to have like strong opinions on it the energy dimensions of russia's annexation of crimea or lessons from russian operations in crimea and eastern blah 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 blah, blah. Russia does not seem to be after ukraine's gas reserves etc 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 like we have all, like our whole like war plan for this area is based around like oil pipelines and blocking the oil pipeline that the Russians were building in the Nord Stream so we can build our oil pipeline that comes up um, through the Ukraine, which is why we're trying to hold on to it so that we have like the crossroads of like where oil and natural gas is sold in that area because that's how we maintain our global hegemony. Like that's so how we the Nord Stream pipeline hegemony. is basically for the purpose of buying gas from Russia. Yeah, that was the purpose, but now it's been halted. What is it? But this is through Ukraine. That isn't even a NATO country. What does this have to do with NATO forcing things on other countries? How do you think we do that? Do what? Does America like do any sort of like influence campaigns like in Europe to like influence their domestic? Everybody's influencing everybody all the time for everything. Okay. So I'm sure we do. Sure. Okay. So do you think? So do you think that like we would like say influence this or destabilize this region to Hold make on. sure that destabilizing like, say... a region is way different than influencing things. These are two fundamentally different claims. Everybody influences well, everybody. Of what's course. the difference? Well, well the difference Russian is that one can be running advertisement America campaigns, doing lobbying, doing uh, you know presentations in front of government people. It could be could be public campaigns. There's a whole different thing versus that versus like invading a country or like blowing shit up or terrorist activities about or sanctions like, or terrorists terrorist. in an area. Sure, arming terrorists in an area would be like a violent intervention. Sure. Okay, so do we do that? In Europe? Yeah. Where? Uh, I mean, historically, we did this in Italy. I'm not... Right? Or I'm historically... No, 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 no. In the past, like, 20 years. Uh, Eastern Europe, like the Balkans? I mean, bro. Was George, what was Clinton doing? Dude? What, 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 were, what were the extremists... What were the terrorists that we were arming? And which ones when, dude? Like, we do this all the fucking time. Then name a That's couple. Difficult. I'm talking about the Azov Battalion. Okay. Right now. We don't arm the Azov about, Battalion. Like, and the right Azov Battalion doesn't yeah, exist do. right now. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We we're, we just sent arms over to Ukraine. Do you think We that send arms, arms to like, Ukraine. Ukraine has a military, and the Azov Battalion is part of that military. Trained their military, by the way. What? Trained their military. I, I don't know. I'm sure they get probably help from all sorts of people. Probably some from the West, but... Why are you wait? Hold yeah, on. You're, no, do you see how you're pivoting from one topic to the next every single time you get like? Uh, do you do you? I don't I, see it as different topics. Okay, you, okay. Like let's sure. Let's let's like try to stay on one thing instead of hopping, 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 hopping. When you realize that you're like talking about because it started with like I was curious who's the third example of somebody that joined NATO from the SS <laughs> that was like or founded just, NATO from the SS. But but what what, what if we want to focus like on the Azov like, Battalion, right? For... Like any any military assistance we send to any country in the world is probably going to help a Nazi somewhere, right? Because militaries just tend to have more far right people or nationalist people than any other military. Against... I don't think we should send military assistance. That's great. I don't care. That wasn't Europe. what the, that wasn't what the conversation was about. The conversation was whether or not I think we're we armed. should. You said that's. I don't care. That's not what we're talking about. You said the, the conversation was whether or not we armed yeah, the Azov Battalion, right? So yeah. we send money yeah. to and arms to Ukraine, right? The Azov Battalion and every other yeah. paramilitary battalion was integrated into the Ukrainian armed forces in 2014. So of course, any military assistance we send is going to end up with all the military yeah. of, of Ukraine. So how how should is we that? Keep sending them arms. Yeah, of course. So they can defend themselves. Sure. Yeah, I disagree. Okay. If you want to have a conversation on whether we should or shouldn't help other countries, that's fine. But you can't pretend that we're arming terrorist groups by sending money to Ukraine's military. 
That's effectively what we're doing. Now. But no, that's not effectively what we're doing. That's one byproduct of like it the. Is. Okay. You're just putting it. You're doing PR. You're doing a PR. I'm not putting. I'm not well, doing no. PR. Now you're having. I mean, if somebody who's so well read, I wouldn't expect to have such a one dimensional view on like these types of interactions. One dimensional. It's incredibly one dimensional. It's. Empire does. it's, it's okay. Not. All right. Okay, what do you think the Russian perspective is? Like, what is what? Do you have a an equally nuanced view of like Russia's actions, or is it like what's the, what are their motivations? Why is Russia doing what it's doing? Why is Russia invading Ukraine? Um, I'm sure. I, well, leading up to the to the most recent invasion, probably because the civil wars in the east were starting to die down. Turkey was sending Ukraine more and more of like a particular type of drone bombers that were like pushing the odds in Ukraine's favor. The um, Russia had been continuing to move their military forces across the border, threatening Ukraine such that if Ukraine didn't like cede these territories to the east, at some point, like Russia is going to have to invade or they lose all credibility on the world stage. So, I mean, it's just been something that's kind of like been building yeah. over the past year. Does that make sense for them to do that in that situation? Sure. Okay, so they're not really doing anything like irrational, right? No, but like somebody that murders somebody might not necessarily be irrational as well. That doesn't mean it's right. I mean, I just I don't think they Isn't should be like, isn't there like a difference between like killing someone like in a way where it's like you know like self defense and then like you know murdering someone? Isn't there it's like different sure. things? But if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna say that Russia is not acting irrationally, then of course the West is not acting irrationally either, right? Of course not. I don't think the West is acting irrationally. I think that the presentation of what they're doing is uh, false. Well, but that's but the, that's the same of Russia interests. and the West as well, right? Sure. Russia's presentation sure. of like denazifying Ukraine is a joke, obviously, right? I think Putin means that as kind of a sneaky, like he's like making like it's like a very funny. If you speak Russian, he's very funny. No, he's it's like jokes. it's just propaganda. Making fun of it's their pro literally yeah, he's making propaganda. fun of their propaganda. Okay, that's what he's doing. Okay, ironizing the Ukrainian Do propaganda something. in a very clever way. Like it's he's fun. He's making a joke. Gotcha. Like that's one thing that doesn't translate that well. But of course, I can tell you as a Russian speaker, uh -huh. he's making fun of Ukrainian Obama. propaganda when he says stuff like that. So like when he's like, oh, you want to like decommunize, like we'll show you real decommunization. Not, who are they decommunizing? They're not invading Russia to decommunize anything. How no, is it, but does they, it make they sense? said that they said that he said that. Because, OK, I'll explain to you the joke Putin made in his like speech in February. So Lenin created the district known as the Ukraine as like an administrative district, right? It had never existed as an administrative state with like borders defined as the Ukraine ever until that moment. So they, and then this current hegemony in the Ukraine has been eliminating statues of Lenin under a policy they're calling decommunization. So Putin made the joke that if they want to really decommunize that he will get rid of the borders that Lenin made making it a Ukrainian like state and taking it back into Russia. That's the joke. You see, I, I don't think it's a joke. I think it's been presented enough times. It was a joke. OK, gotcha. Can you speak some Russian you, for us? Russian I'm curious. Wait, wait, can you say some of that? Right OK, gotcha. Just making sure. Um, a while it's kind of rusty but i did study it in college for years and you know i read a lot and i have russian friends okay um so i mean if we agree that the west and the east are both acting rationally then i guess both of them we don't disagree then that's fine sure although it seems okay. like russia is so, not being very rational because now they've like empowered all of nato to hate the fuck out of them and more people are considering joining nato and their really military have a operation choice on that. they absolutely had a choice they just didn't have to invade ukraine they could have like shored they, up their own stuff in, the in their day, own country and focused you know, russia wanted to you know they wanted to join nato back in the day um yeah it kind of had been floated a bit um in the early 90s and even oh, under um, why weren't putin. they allowed why weren't they invited in with open arms? well they were allowed but i believe putin said he didn't want to take the um normal process he wanted to skip the line basically i think he said it was insulted that they'd have to go through the normal steps to do it so they didn't pursue it i mean because because he, he considered it basically as like because russia is like this huge power right they're it's not sort a of huge like, power no, russia is not they think they are, but they're not anymore. It's not the cult. Who cares about historically? We're not talking about history anymore. We're talking about the now. We're not we joining are, we're NATO historically. No, no. <laughs> we're living in uh, history. No, we don't. That's great if you were a superpower in the fifties and sixties or whatever, but that's not where we're at right now, right? Okay, but they have a ton of natural resources. I'm saying it's a massive place. You know, it's big power. It's a big land mass with a ton of resources and a ton of different peoples. Like it's a big thing. So like. I think it's like, you know, when we created the UN, the Russia got to cut the line. But then China. Became, okay. like, We're not talking about the UN anymore. right now, right? But like the idea is if NATO is supposed to be this sort of similar, like 
transnational like means of like mutual defense and like you know policy discussions etc cetera, etc cetera, then why wouldn't they want to have russia involved they could because it's actually they just have not to, they just designed have to... to destroy russia it, it's not designed to destroy russia um the, it is it's not it's the, the when is NATO... why did it exist well initially NATO it, initially created? nato existed as a counterpoint to the soviet sphere of influence however post collapse of the soviet union now nato just kind of exists for the general security apparatus of the of europe security against anything you, it's hard to attack a country when they're such in nato as, what such as like so who's threatening them who's threatening nato nobody threatens nato that's the whole point of nato you're not threatened when you're in nato <laughs> that's that's the point so they have complete unipolar power over the entire world nato nato runs the world um, I mean, in a roundabout way, not really, and because NATO typically it. only applies to like European countries generally, although that might be expanding. But um, yeah, you don't you don't attack a NATO country. That's the point. Because they're number one, imperial power number one. Everyone else, like, get fucked. Like, you're a loser. Join NATO or submit. If you're four years old, I guess. But the reality is that when you're in NATO and you have a military alliance like that backing you up, you don't attack a NATO country because you know you always lose, right? And, and, and there, no other world power wants to go to war like that because why would because war sucks about vietnam like afghanistan didn't nato fight afghanistan like aren't there nato troops like in afghanistan what happened there is afghanistan in nato i might have missed it i'm sorry i'm, I'm i oh, no, no, no. So oh what are you asking what are you saying i'm asking like what aren't aren't haven't these like forces been defeated like what's the last war we won the iraq war i don't know what do you mean we won. We win in Iraq. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like we won. But... We invaded and we deposed the leader. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Okay. Is that a W for you? It, I don't know. Well, I, it, you're asking different questions. Do you want to just talk about like missions? Because in terms of missions, I mean, like theoretically, like even Libya was considered a win. The mission was accomplished. I, I mean, if you want to ask a broader question about like for the okay, overall... and we saw he died. I know. Okay, so if you want to ask a broader question, that's fine. But you can't ask us, like, well, did we win a war? Like, yeah, we did. <laughs> I mean, we won in two weeks in Iraq. But it depends on what you're asking. I, I don't know what you're at. Well, I know what you're at. You're jumping from topic to topic, obviously, right? But, um, yeah, fuck. We're, we're, you're running well, around just, in so like, many different to topics. Do you think, mm -hmm. think this is like a force for good in the world? Like NATO? NATO? Yeah, I would say so. World? Yeah, for sure, generally. Really? Why? Because I think that you're just saying, like, you know, they depose these leaders they create chaos. Like, in, I don't like, think generally they cre they only create chaos. Um, I, I think I generally support um, at least most of the NATO missions that I've read about. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I generally Pleated support uranium and like Kosovo, <laughs> things like that. Do you think the intervention of Kosovo was a bad idea? I, I told you, I'm like a real American. I'm a, opposed to like all European. That's not a real American. That's like a brain dead populist it is. that thinks that like we shouldn't do anything. That's what the founding country. fathers wanted. Okay, Kosovo, I think, is like one of the literally like most pro American countries in the entire fucking world. <laughs> like, um, oh, I, I think they were happy that we intervened, but I mean, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I personally just don't think that we should be involved in governing like the world. I think that we that's should. That's great. You know, that's uh, fine. Do but a like, better job of. <clears throat> I, I, I think that if you were like an Albanian so being ethnically here. cleansed in Kosovo, I think you were probably pretty happy that, that NATO intervened there. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Well, maybe, the 90% approval rate that they have today of the United States, which is like higher than fucking almost any other country in the world, seems to disagree with you. But maybe you just don't care about those people because yeah. you're a I mean, American. I guess if you were like a landlord in like, you know, Nicaragua, and like you, you get the you get the right wing death squads are funded by America. I guess gotcha. you really like America too, you know? Okay. Who's to say? Who's to say who's good or bad? I don't know. Um, okay. Well, I don't have such a weird view of the world, so I guess it's hard to agree on that. Um, but yeah, no, so, I, I mean, what do you think? I, I mean, well, I, okay, hold on. This, this, is, so this is kind of what I'm talking bad. about, right? This is like this conversation, the like the schizophrenic conversation of like bouncing around to random topics, not really saying anything of note, not usually like anything insightful, nothing of value. Like we've just like jumped from like, do you understand that this conversation has like gone over like 50 different topics and we haven't like really talked about anything. We haven't said anything of value, either of us. I'm more just trying to like figure out like what your like general vision is because what what I all no, I know you don't care about my general vision is you don't have I any do. idea of what my general vision is you have like a I huge grand narrative that you you're trying to fit every part of the world into and then you're interested I guess when part of my view like the hegemony 
you support the prevailing hegemony. You think it's better than anything else that exists in the world. I think that and, I think uh, that NATO as an organization that countries voluntarily join is superior to another country that yeah invades countries, takes them over, and tries to steal their territory. I would say that yeah, generally. I just think it's like a very naive view of how things actually work. Like you know, frankly, I just think you're very naive. I mean, you can like, say naive, but like you're, everything you've talked about in this conversation demonstrates like an insane amount of naivety. Basically, U.S. bad is your entire That's policy. Your and, no, it's not. It's based on what you think. Said. The U.S. is bad. I don't think the U.S. is bad. What do you think, think, think would be better for Ukrainian people? You think them joining NATO or Russia taking the country over? Uh, I think that it would be better for Russia to take it over. Yeah. What about Ukraine? I don't. Uh, do you know what Ukraine means, like in its own language? What about like, Ukraine? Where the word comes from? What about the country of you, Ukraine? What do you know about Ukraine? Like Ukraine? What does that mean? What do you think what about the country of Ukraine? Here's what I, I know about Ukraine. In 1991, they declared themselves independent policy. from the Soviet Union, and their borders were recognized by the rest of the world, Russia included. That's what I know about Ukraine, uh, including Crimea, yeah. by the way, which was illegally annexed by Russia in 2014. That's what I know about Ukraine. So the country of Ukraine, Legally, the country, to... the country of Ukraine. So who would be better for Ukraine? Them joining NATO or Russia going in and doing what they want with the country? Russia. Why? Uh, because they have uh, the like same like sphere of influence and like, you know, they have like similar like world. They speak like basically the same fucking language. Their histories are mutually tied together. They're like inseparable throughout. Literally all none of these things are a good argument. Do you want to go through them one at a time? They are. They are a good argument. Okay. Languages I mean, being sure. similar is not a reason for one country to invade you. That's not a good reason for them to invade you and take your shit. Number one. Um, the it's second thing they mentioned, it is an invasion. I don't know what this is like. You don't, you, right okay, now, so you don't think there's an invasion in Ukraine? To be clear, to be clear, I do not think the prevailing regime of international law is authoritative or has absolute value. Wait, who, what are you like, even saying right now? You, we're pivoting again. It's another pivot. This is another pivot. Internet. Okay. Because what you're saying is that right now in the current international legal regime, that this is recognized as a country. It's like blah, a blah, Markov blah, blah, blah. chain that of like doesn't random matter big me. statements that you make. Like I, I'm, I feel like if I leaked, if I had like your DMs another person, but like with Haas, I see why you guys are friends now. You guys say so much, but you're not actually saying anything at all. It's just like it's like Markov chaining together well, a, a bunch lot of foreign people policy think terms. that I say a lot. You no, know, so yeah, yeah I understand. Me. I agree. There probably are people because I know people like you that think they're saying a lot, and then people listen to you and they think you're saying, but you're not really, you're not really saying anything at all of value. There's nothing you're saying. So I know people like you who think that who, when they mm -hmm. can't understand something mm -hmm. or see where something is going, that they determine. I that understand there. everything you're saying. If you think I don't understand something, I don't think you do. Okay, you just gave me some strange statement about how you don't value the judgment of international communities in relation to military yeah. interventions in other countries. Now I understand why yes. you might say that because a lot of those international communities Obama. are headed by people like the United States or people like the UN who are going yeah. to be biased towards Western Exactly. Powers. Yes, exactly. I know what you're saying because it's copy pasted thoughtless dialogue from other leftist conversations. But the reality no, is, not, is hold on, leftist. wait, wait, let me finish. The reality is, is that that Markov chain of ideas has nothing to do with the question that I asked you about whether or not Russia was invading Ukraine. You pivoted to another Markov chain so talking point that you have. The definition of invasion, the definition of invasion is determined juridically by these You don't think that courts. we can have some third party definition of, is that country no, invading the other country? No, there's no such thing as a fucking third party. Okay, What's a third party? sure, okay, gotcha. Let me boil this down then into, into other words, because I played video games. Do you think that Russia has men with guns and soldiers in tanks and some airplanes going past the borders the of Ukraine in an aggressive country. manner to, to blow stuff up? Do you think that's happening right now? Yes. Are okay. we doing that in Libya? Did we do that in Libya? Was that an invasion or was that a police action? I don't in know Libya, was that in Libya, we didn't go there to seize territory from the country. Okay, what did we go there for? We, to get rid of Gaddafi and to stop the ethnic genociding that was going on there. It was a very limited scope of mission. Okay. It was so limited and it was so obvious that Gaddafi was so fucked up that I don't even think Russia or China voted against this military action. That's how fucked that place was. Did, was the aftermath of Libya good? No, I agree. But you want to compare Libya, where we went in with a specific mission goal? You want to compare that intervention to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, where they're trying to you, steal do territory? Think, do you believe? I'm going to ask you just sincerely. Do you literally believe? You're not. You're that pivoting again. You're, you're pivoting again. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm asking. You're, no, no, no. You're trying to pivot to another topic. No, it's like, it's so obviously not comparable. Talking, it's not. I'm not pivoting. 
<sighs> oh my god. Can I just say what I'm going to say? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think we really went into Libya to stop a genocide? That's the reason why we went. Yeah, we lit there was literally a UN mandate related to like chemical weapons and shit. People were being like tortured and gassed life, in that country. Yes. Andy? You think that's why we really went is because of a moral concern from the UN. That's why that happened. Um, you tell me. No, I'm just asking you, do you think that's how world historical decisions are made? It's like <laughs> you have the UN doing just these objective reports on like human rights or whatever, and they go, hey, this world historical crime against humanity is happening. We need to assemble like the Avengers and go in and stop it. My, that's why no, that happened? No, my broader understanding is that there is a general understanding of how the security situation ought to be set up in Europe, is, is a general understanding, okay? And with that general understanding, when people who are either in Europe or very close to Europe are doing really fucking weird things, like using chemical weapons on their people, these are types of things that nobody likes. So if we see shit like that- We ever that, use chemical weapons on our own people? Past the year 1990? I don't know, have we? When? Multiple times. I mean, what do, what do you- Name do you one mean? time. Like, Don't just say they, multiple times. Give okay. me an example. When, when, when they send in riot troops and the gas t the areas with, say, with gas, like, is that a chemical weapon attack or not? I think just through policing? military terms it is. But do you think that Gaddafi was using tear gas against his citizens? <laughs> is it... I'm sure he was. Okay. Um, fuck, this is really boring. Okay, are we good? I don't know, like you're just saying things are boring when you want it's to. It's like, boring because you're because like, you, you don't because I. Detail no, no, it, like, I am trying to go into detail. You're trying to tell me that tear gas is comparable to fucking nerve gas, bro. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, um, do you know how much shit America does to its own citizens? Like, it's insane. Like, do you, you see how you pivoted like, now like, to another work. topic? Now we've gotten away from the Russian invasion into I mean, Ukraine. It, you tried to compare it to Libya. Now you want to talk about tear gas in the United States? Do you see pivot, pivot, pivot? Do you see how you right. can't because you don't actually so, know about any of these things? You just have like these Markov chains of like Ugh. leftist propaganda that you've memorized about all these places, you're and you like to recite them. Dude. I'm not projecting because I'm willing just to go projecting. in on any of these things. You're the one that you're changing the topic, hey, not me. I am. I haven't changed any of the topics you said here. You got bored. You are the ones you that are. You got bored. I'm getting bored because you're changing topics so much. Like, okay, so we're just going to talk about this specific thing, right? We're talking about the UN. We're talking about third parties. We were talking societies. about Russia's what invasion about? into Ukraine. That's what we were talking yes, about. Yes, I am saying that Russia's invasion into Ukraine is, in my understanding, not like an invasion in the sense of like conquering territory it literally like is there to conquer territory for spoils what do you think crimea was crimea is where a lot of ethnic russian speakers who are being who were not a fan of the ukrainian regime that nato and like the cia amongst other people helped establish in the late like do Obama you think era. that like, do you, you think that hold on do you think that a group of people not being a fan of a government gives another country the right to step in and invade and annex that territory isn't that what we do? When? In Libya? We annexed Libya? Holy shit. I got a U.S. passport. Can I go oh. fucking fly there right now? What are you talking about? You don't understand what you're talking about. We deposed them. No, okay? we did not we take, we did not threaten their, their territorial sovereignty such that we are annexing parts of Libya. That didn't happen. Did any parts of Libya declare into, like themselves as an independent republic? Sure, they might have. And you know what? Stuff related to Bosnia and shit they, happened no, afterwards with the, with the collapse of Yugoslavia. But that's not what I'm talking about. We had a UN mandate to go to Libya. It's different than one country invading another country to seize territory. Why would you compare the annexation of Crimea the to, to, NATO, so? to NATO intervention in, in Libya? It's not the same thing. We didn't go in to steal— the UN said so? If the, I think if there's a collection of countries that are okay with things, I think that it gives you a slightly stronger mandate than one country acting unilaterally. It was literally a unanimous vote with the UN Security Council that China and Russia sit on. How, how, like, how are you going to compare this to Russia's annexation of Crimea? Also, again, notice how you've pivoted back to Libya. When I asked you, is it justified? Is it justified? Is it justified? There were, there were no chemical weapon attacks in Crimea. There, were no, there was no genociding happening in Crimea. What is Russia's justification to annex that peninsula? Uh, that it's historically been a part of Russia. That, and that's enough reason to invade and steal something? Can Mexico invade the United States and steal property from Or any of the number of countries in Europe? I hope so. Okay. So everybody in Europe can just invade everybody else in Europe and take everything because it used to belong to other people at some point in time? Sure.
whatever. I don't care about Europe. Like, I want to leave. Like, okay, I care wait, about wait, America. Do you see the pivot? Holy shit. I don't care no, about Europe now. It's not really now. a pivot at all. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying that my goal is to get all American military bases off of the do face something. of the planet. Yeah, I right? know. I'm sure. My goal is to completely dissolve this empire. Like, right? So, like, I don't want any of these things to exist. I want the Europeans to deal with them shit themselves. I don't want to be involved. I don't want our people to go over there. I don't want to be funding anything over there. I don't want to be sending arms to Europe. I don't want all of these built because the reason is, is like our funding of these things has negative effects on us at home. Our creation of this empire hurts us here. Our it creation of the empire helps us. Day. It ensures the safety of trade all across the world. Okay, it gives it a lot of people. Capital. What? It helps capital. It helps well, capital. Yeah, well, capital that exists in our country. Do you don't think you don't think that any of the well, benefits of any of the capital flow? Banks. Okay. All right. Um, okay, fuck, Jesus. Holy shit, you're, it's like, <laughs> it's, I see the Markov chains. <laughs> oh my god, it's so it's annoying. It's not a Markov chain. It is, you're, it's just like, it's all these statements that are just like, I've heard like a million times before, like rearranged into random nonsensical fucking, this is what I mean when I say you lack critical engagement, right? Random or nonsense. You're not, you're not, you it's can't not critically engage with anything I'm talking about. You're just like hopping from and one talking point. Engagement. You're not, you, you don't. I'm not. What do you think, hold on, what do you think critical engagement means? Critical engagement means really listening to what the other person has to say and like trying to understand what they're trying to say and to like, you know, communicate something that you're trying to say and to have that communication like happen. Like critical engagement just means like having a real conversation. Then why do we keep hopping around so many different, questions. how do we keep hopping around because, to so many disconnected topics? Because, because it's become clear to me talking to you that we don't share a lot of the same fundamental experiences you might say, like, right? like. I can't talk to you about something if you have no fucking clue what I'm saying, right? So I'm trying to find somewhere that we share enough of okay, like the how same do we, can, like, where do we share enough that we can have a meaningful conversation about sure. it. Sure. Where do we, we had share meaningful where, conversations where, earlier in this? No, we haven't we had any meaningful conversations yet. We haven't had a single meaningful nothing. conversation. Okay. Wh wh what Not a single thing? No. What part of a meaningful conversation can we have where you can explain to me why Crimea's annexation was a justifiable thing by Russia? Besides, there were a lot of people in that country or in that peninsula that speak Russian. Well, because the people there uh, were approving of it like they wanted it to happen. And the Russian people themselves were very much in favor of it. It was a very popular action. In fact, like Putin's ap approval rating was going down because he wasn't doing enough to annex. Uh, so if a people republics. in a peninsula like another country, that gives that country the right to invade them. To invade Ukraine and take right. that property. That is right. Where is this moral right? justification? I'm not about right. That's what we're talking. Yes, it is. You're literally talking about justifications okay, right who now. Who does Putin have to morally justify himself to? Well, right now, and, to... And around the entire world, we tend to agree that it's not good to invade countries and steal their territory. That's not a good thing. We don't like that. Do you think that should be an okay thing? Do you think maybe, you know what? Let's back up. You Maybe you're right, actually. Do you think fundamentally the world would be a better place if countries could just invade people and take their land? Should we go back to that? I think we're already in that. It just depends on what country. We're you not are. in that. This hasn't happened it in thirty years. It's fundamentally are. a brand new thing. This has this has not happened. This is, doesn't happen in the world in decades, or not in the world, but in Europe for decades. That's why this is such a big deal. One country invading another to steal their land is shit that we don't see anymore. Yeah, I don't agree with that framing of things. Like the frame, the way you're framing it is like leading to your conclusions. But I think that narrative, the story you're telling about this, I think isn't true. What's not true about it? I don't think I like because I think you have to have a larger context of this. What we have is NATO. We have a force that was designed to destroy the Soviet Union, which they did. And then we devastated the Russian economy in the 90s by sending in these like neoliberal shock troops to totally dev like privatize and just pillage their economy. And it caused one of the largest decreases in like standard of living and like all of human history was the collapse of the Soviet Union completely terrible event that destroyed so much like human capital and wealth mm -hmm. and caused like refugee crises we've, and things we've like hopped that. into so another markov created, chain right yeah it's not a markov chain this is, is history i'm saying the story of russia mm -hmm. at this time period is like a much longer story like we have to go all the way back to like the russian empire fighting with the british empire mm -hmm. over this exact same thing do you have you do you know much about the Crimean War? Like the Crimean Wars between the British and Russia, like the great game over like Eurasia? Like this is the foundations of geopolitics, like mm -hmm. Mackinder's World Island. All of these things are about conflicts in this region. And this is what how, how long do you think he'll just like hop from topic to topic? Like what do you think what do you think will end up by the time he's done talking? Justifiable to 
and like just invade a sovereign country and steal their land. That's just the ideological framing that we're providing it from this side of the conflict. That doesn't have like a world historical truth to it. That's just this hegemony's perspective on events. And I'm opposed to this hegemony. So I did, don't agree with the fundamental story that it's telling about reality. See what I'm saying? I have no fucking idea what you just said, uh, but uh, maybe it's because I'm not read enough, I guess. Yeah, do you want do you want to critically engage with it, or do you want? There's to nothing to engage with. You're not cool. making any profound statements. You're, it's just like a bunch of like little. It's not true. It I just made a lot of true. points, and just because you have stated that I mm -hmm. haven't doesn't mean that I haven't. Okay. You're just saying that like rhetorically, your your denial that I've said anything meaningful makes it not meaningful. Like that's all you're saying. You're saying in your estimation, you didn't understand or find value in what I'm saying. That doesn't mean there's no value or no meaning to what I'm saying. Maybe you're not the one critically engaging with what I'm saying. Maybe you're not. Every time I try to engage, to I can't I'm even. Saying. I barely am catching my breath, running from point to point with you as you like hop from one thing to another. So, okay, uh, like, I have a lot to say. It's a complicated thing. Do you have patience? It's not that you, you have a lot know? to say, and it it's not that it's like complicated. That it's that you just have a really bad time, like critically engaging with the topics. So you have a lot of random things you want to say that mean nothing. I think that's what you're saying. I think that's how you view it, but I, I don't think you're right about that. Yeah, well, obviously. obviously. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying like maybe you could like try to critically engage with what I'm saying. I'm like, if I'm saying something and you're like, wait, what do you mean by that? We could have a conversation about it, but what it seems more to me is that you're not that interested in learning anything about this or in, in engaging with a different perspective. You're pretty content with your own perspective, and you're mostly interested in just like fighting off what you see to be like attacks and like the validity of your perspective. Like that's how I feel. I don't feel like you're trying to like learn or understand or have a real conversation. I feel like you're looking for like a moment or place which you can like shut me down or like uh like in a way where it's like now the conversation's over. Like we haven't even like had critical engagement across like what I'm trying to say. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say. I don't. Like I don't think if I ask you, okay, so if you could sum up for me, what am I trying to say? It's usually the test, right? Like if you can tell me what I think in a way that I would agree to your wording of it, et cetera, et cetera, or to the general understanding, then we actually have communicated something. Sure, but okay. I don't think you're my understanding of, doing that of what you're saying is that in in the most macro, broad sense of the world, okay the entire statements that I'm making can basically be understood as kind of like this curtain that's been draped over everybody's eyes from, I could call it like the neoliberal establishment, I could call it a Western establishment, I can call it a US hegemonic establishment, but basically there's like this story that the, the US hegemony likes to tell the world, that the US are the good guys, that NATO is expanding to protect countries and provide security in Europe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in reality, behind the scenes, you have these more contrived political powers that are backed by capital that are essentially trying to like export their influence and everything all across the world, um, especially across Europe, especially in contrast to communist or socialist movements, especially in um, contrast to like Russia. And that the entire goal um, provided for examples of things like the Nord Stream Pipe 2 or the idea that we are contrary to some of our values, like drafting people from uh, Germany into NATO, even though we say NATO is supposed to be a, a mission for peace, that all of these things serve as giant blocks, giant pillars to understand that the reality is, is that all of this stuff that's being built around the world is just to serve the interests of a few people that are really high in these hegemonic positions in the West, that are really high these really high capital holders that they don't really represent the interests of the average person and part of the reason why i guess like the world is falling apart is because either people are slowly starting to realize that or these people can only serve their interests for so long before everything falls apart for everybody else that's kind of what it sounds like you're saying yeah it's a basic marxist hermeneutic okay so i understand what you're saying i just think it's all stupid so now where do we go okay okay so why do you think that's stupid for for, for a million reasons one is because to, to have an analysis like this, a macro perspective on this, we have to get micro on every single little claim. Does capital really control the prevailing interests of the political class? Or is it the citizen? That's an important thing that we have to have a discussion on. It's a really big discussion. And it's not even, it's, not, it's nowhere near, no. I think that the public has a huge control over the elected class. And you run into, yes, and you run into this time and time Popular again. Where, I don't care. I don't care what you're going to say, okay? You run into this time and time and time again because people will say things like there's a ruling class, there's an elite, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, oh, really? Well, how do you point to the fact that people like Bernie Sanders got kind of popular? Oh, well, the ruling class kept him out. So he was only, he was controlled opposition. Oh, okay. What about people like Trump winning the election? That guy wasn't ruling class. Oh, well, actually, uh, they ended up picking, like, it there's was. always an excuse why that, like, this conspiracy works most of the time, but it didn't work in that time or why, like, and eventually at the end of the day, maybe, we end up debating all of these really nebulous, 
weird, stupid things that don't really translate to anything real at all. We have to talk about like the, the Bilderbergs and the fucking demon gardens and the groves or whatever. I, I don't even know half the fucking shit because it's so boring to me, okay? And, and we don't actually get to discuss anything that's happening in the real world. Instead, we elect for these like really exciting and really fun narratives that we think could explain all of the world's problems because they're way more fun and interesting to talk about than kind of the more boring on the ground realities of the world we live in. Well, I'm not opposed to talking about the, the micro level either, but I think that like they inform each other, right? Like if you have an accurate view at the macro level, then, you know, it helps you have a more accurate view on the micro level. I disagree. Too, right? I think like, that the macro level, that abstraction necessarily needs to be derived from your individual understanding of what's going on. And in fact, I would say ne I would say necessarily, because if you have a macro understanding first, you're only going to selectively pick the micro things that fit that narrative. And you're going to preclude any ability you have to actually have a greater I understanding. Of what I think it's I think it's definitionally true. Anybody that approaches something with a macro level so. understanding of what's going on without even knowing what's going on is always going to pick and choose because the world is huge. What are we at? Like eight, nine billion people? You can always find events. You can always find facts and figures. You can always find a study to support your prevailing macro theory if that's all you're looking for. So I think that approaching things with a macro theory first is horrible. You have to look at a whole bunch of different micro things and then you construct your macro theory yeah. based on the things you've seen. No, I'm my macro theory, my macro theory here isn't something that I'm like coming with I like arrived with a priori, etc. Like I've come to this view through like having gone through made many other worldviews, right? And like challenging myself with like tons of different uh like perspectives and evidence etc so it's like really this view that i've come to like that i'm trying to describe it's not something that i came to like a priori or whatever and i understand that you deal with like a lot of like western leftoids and like people who are like kind of unserious about reading this stuff but i'm asking you to like actually treat me as if i might know a little bit more than some like dullard leftoid or whatever who's just like mouthing off as you say like markov chains and things like that because that's not really my perspective i'm not like I don't agree with them on most of the things that they would say. I have read a lot of Marx, obviously. I've read a lot of a lot of things, but that's like been very influential to me. And so have a lot of other things, right? But um, I don't agree this idea that like you have to pick either doing things from like constructing on the micro level into the macro level or from the macro level and then conforming the micro level to that. I think that there's like a dialectical engagement here. Like when I go and investigate things on the micro level, that will change my mind on things on like the macro level too and vice versa, you know? Like it's kind of a perpetual process of education. I'm not trying to pick one over the other. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We'll listen. I'm saying we can have a conversation at the macro level or we can have a conversation at the micro, micro level. But if what I've been trying to do is to move between those two, and I feel like that's what you has been throwing you. Gotcha. Like you don't want to move between um, talking about the micro level and then back to the micro, macro level and then back to the micro level, back and forth. But that's generally how I think. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Does that make any sense? Yep, I gotcha. Um, okay, well, listen. It's been fun. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, play video games because that's my dialectic engagement with the world, okay? Okay, well, let me know if you ever want to read books. Okay, I'll think about it, okay? And help you out. Okay, have fun, buddy. Right. Peace out. Can you stop? Oh my god. Okay, we just need to do one jump attack, maybe? When I say, like, critical engagement, does that make sense to anybody in chat when I say that? Like, I feel like sometimes I talk to some people, I, like, I'm guessing that guy's read stuff, maybe? Um, but like whenever, th there's like a huge red flag that I have in my head, and maybe it's not fair to say this, but like whenever people make these statements like, oh, what about the studies? What about the research? What about whatever? It's like, okay, well, let's talk about some. Or when people are like, oh, well, have you read Mills? Have you read uh, Hegel? Have you I these people are like, generally these are like pretty prolific writers. Like what writing are you referring to and how is it relevant to the conversation, right? Like wh whoever just like references one off, like, oh. Keep hating your life then, working class Andy. <clears throat> like this thing, like, I don't know what I don't I don't know what the relevance of that is or how you're like how this is supposed to be like a profound or insightful or what am I even yeah it's just oh god it's so irritating to me.